<laughs> hey guys. I don't care. Hey. Whoa. What's going on, guys? You realize what today is? It is our first Saturday. It's Sunday. Sunday. It's, it's Sunday. It's definitely Sunday. Oh. And it's our first info arcade. Say, that explains working? why Chick Fil A was closed. It's okay. All right. All right. Poor, poor Blake. Anyway, it's our first info arcade monthly podcast. I'm Jaden. I'm Blake. I'm Nate. Wait, is it just info arcade podcast? Did we decide on a name yet? No, I don't think we the... have a name. Maybe we should let our fans decide on the name. Let's call it. You mean our uh, fan. We have fans. Let's call it the Cast Pod. I still say Info Cascade. Info Cascade. All right. Uh, so wait, first no, order of business. Answer? First order remember. of business for the fans. We will create a poll, and you guys get to decide our name. I think that's fair. Info <laughs> Cascade. Excuse Dude, me, I got you allergies. You need to stop smoking in the studio. How many times um, I got to tell you? <laughs> no, Jade but no, so you, I apologize that I've got allergies today. Dude, allergies are no joke. No, they no they're hilarious. Just not for me. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So, um, today is approximately three weeks out from the start of E3. Do you guys realize that? Well, is that close? It's that close. I've not been paying attention. Yep. <laughs> That's why we decided <laughs> to go ahead and probably... We, we should probably do this now. As, it's probably better now than... Than later, because by the time we do it later, it'll be E3. And... Let's just do the podcast at E3. See, that was the plan, but <laughs> that oh. was the plan. But uh, oh. everyone's broke. Yeah. Okay. But we are going to Vegas, cool. or at least I am, and you guys are welcome to come for GameStop Expo uh, this August. We're going to play some of the games we see at E3. We're going to do some live video and some kind of breakdown coverage. So. Make sure you guys tune in to our channel for that when that time comes. But right now, yep. we're talking about E3. Are we? Yeah, but um, before we get into the the E3... The Electronic Beast Entertainment Expo. Isn't that more like E-cubed? Not. Why yeah, I guess. I mean, I know it's E3, but why know. wouldn't they just call it E-cubed? Well, because that would imply that there's actually like... No, no, actually, There are no, three E's. Right. E to the third. Oh, okay, anyway. So before we get into the beast of a topic that E3 is and the predictions and all that jazz, what if we go ahead and discuss some other top stories of ours, things that we want to chop into for a few minutes that we think would be good? We think would be very good? Yes? No. Yes? I watched Galaxy Quest last night. I can't do the voice. Uh, that is noted. That Thank is... you. <laughs> that was awful. Never do that again. Anyway. Oh, come on. So, we They're are talking worse. about some things today. What are we talking about? Um, so, we brought some topics, and I think Nate is only bored over here and on his phone simply because we're not already talking about it, and that is mm. Destiny. Okay, I'm out. Have fun, guys. It's okay, Blake. Don't worry. They are bringing it to PC this round, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, they are. But it, you so guys, why aren't you excited? You guys don't have PCs. Uh, who am I going to play with? People. Like Blake. <sighs> I don't like people. One of the things that I have learned about Destiny that's really hilarious, and I really hope that this stays with the new clan system that uh -huh. they're developing, which is cool. Uh -huh. And you don't have to, you know, uh -huh. you don't have to do that. Uh -huh. Do you have to do that? Uh -huh. Is this something that you need okay. to do? Do you need to be condescending right. with the first topic? That seems right. unneeded. Okay. <laughs> hey. Hey, I, I have a tip for you. It's called findmyraidsquad.com. No, you don't even need that anymore. Did you not see what they were doing? No, I was just being smartass. Okay, I'll just sure. do what I did for the last few games. Just no, I mean, guy online but and to, find the group there. To complete my thought, basically, <laughs> the thing with Destiny is you. there was such <coughs> a, a, an issue getting raid groups together that according to like the press conference itself, 50% of players weren't able to play in raid groups because they couldn't like find parties but i always loved finding random parties because i would go on to like i think destiny looking for group.net and i would just find some people who are there and you just jump into this batch of like six strangers oh and wait. it was super fun wait so it didn't have like a uh, original destiny didn't have like an auto party system no, for raids. not not for raids they only huh. had an automart they didn't have one for raids or nightfalls that's what unfortunate they did have 
It actually was. Because I really enjoyed the raids in uh, Final Fantasy XIV. You could just jump in with a random group or you could bring one with you. But, uh, um, yeah, you didn't need to go to a second party to do it. Go. So what you're telling me is they completely eradicated the issue by replacing it with a LFG in-game where it'll auto-assign you to people trying no. to jump in that are randoms. Okay, no, what, no, are they, no, no. what are they doing? Um, basically, they've developed something that's kind of interesting. What they wanted to do, they wanted to keep the community thing intact, because that is a very big thing about Destiny, is just like the idea that you can just group up with these random people, and it's actually one of the funner communities that I've been involved with in gaming. But uh, basically what they're doing is you can make a clan in-game, and you just develop like this tightly knit group of people but you can also, if you're a solo player, what you can do is you can search for clans who are looking for people to complete an objective. Like, say you have five people out of the six you need for a raid, and the five are in a clan, and then you have this one solo person who wants to do the raid. That solo person can look for a clan who's attempting to raid, so you can find a group of people, but you aren't matchmaking, technically. You're not just getting paired with random people. You are selecting, this is the group that you want to go with, much like in the way that you would choose with uh, one of the community-made sites like Looking for Group or the recruitment thing on the forums. It's a very, very, uh, well, at least I think it's good. I never will know. Well, none of us will know until it actually happens. Until September 8th. Yeah, exactly. But right now it looks very promising, and I'm looking forward to it. Matchmaker, matchmaker, go to another website and match people over there. We don't want you inside of this game. Things just got about me. as crazy as a fiddler on a roof. Oh no, ladies and gentlemen. Jaden, you're joking. Wait, is that where that one was from? I thought that was from Hello Dolly. Oh well. No, nope, that Dolly. is from match. That that matchmaker song is from Fiddler. Anyway, but that, the other one. Okay, yeah, that's why I'm getting confused. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, but that's just one of the things that they're changing around with Destiny too. It's really interesting because they're meeting a lot of expectations with it, and they can't. That was probably the most interesting of what they're doing with it, but. Do you think we yeah. get to play around maybe with it in the beta testing? Oh, totally. Okay. I'm not sure if they'll actually let you like make a clan in the beta, but if they do, that would be cool. They're definitely going to let you play around in the matchmaking system. I feel like that would be a do, huge though. thing to be able to that you'd want to beta test yeah. and want people to explore so they could kind of fine tune it and tweak it. But like as it goes out, you don't want to just throw it out there and then it turn out to be terrible after launch. Well, it's beta, so it's the same thing with Destiny 1. However, this time they have the benefit of the doubt with like moving forward and, hey, we learned how bad this was with the, with the first round. Let's go with the sequel yeah. and hope it's better. Yeah, I hope it's better, too. Uh, I mean, as somebody who's played MMOs, uh, there was a lot to be desired about Destiny. Aside from the fact that I didn't actually have the console to play it or anybody to play it with... Uh, I heard a lot about the features in the game, and it was very behind what an MMO nowadays can do as far as, uh, you know, it had a lot of issues with it uh, mechanically. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully the sequel will fix a lot of those. Like, what specific one are you talking about, just to be sure? Because there's a few things about it. Well, if I can interject, I think the biggest issue that was a huge complaint <laughs> for a lot of Destiny players was... While the raids were fun, while the gameplay was great, yeah, it had its issues with LFG. We've already just discussed those. But the biggest complaint was the lack of story. Like, there's so much lore in the Destiny universe that they've created, and not very much of it was actually in the game itself. And that's where Destiny 2, to me, looks super promising. Well, to be fair, I mean, it's not like uh, MMOs are known for their story anyway. That is technically true to a point. Most of the problems from Destiny stem from Vanilla Destiny. And as someone who was there on opening day, played Vanilla Destiny at like 2 in the morning after you download the day one patch and all that, I can tell you, Destiny 1, like without any DLC, left so much to be desired. Like the funnest part of it, bar none, was the raid, but it, it the light system was confusing and really weird. Well, I don't know how and, true uh, that is. They had moon wizards. Yes, the wizards came from the moon. I, I will say you're right. The DLC added a ton to the game. It added a lot more story to it. But what a lot of people will argue is that they had to pay $40, $50 every mm. DLC just to be able to experience that. And they didn't really get a whole lot out of Vanilla Destiny as far as story. Except for Dinkobot. And they 
just sat and took that away. Ah, I love Dinklebot. Anyway. Nolan North is so much better. Well, I know. Oh my god. <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but at the same time... Yeah. Um, sad day. You will be uh-huh. happy to know, however, that um, in Destiny, like, after they replaced re- replaced uh, Dinklage with Nolan North, if you go to the mission where they do say, a wizard came from the moon, that will play, and then North will like, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> it's it's like just this adorable <laughs> little nod. Oh, man. And uh, it's just really, it's going to be interesting, because North definitely is a better uh, Dinklebot than Dinklebot was. Well, well I mean, he's he does, a professional VA. He does K6 too, yes. right? Actually, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't K- know very K-6 many voices. K6 is Nolan North. Nolan North is the guy from... Uh, Hold on. From your favorite country space western. Hold on. Firefly. Uh, oh! Wait, right? Alan Tudyk? No, the other one. The other guy from that show. Alan Tudyk's in that show. Yeah, he is. He's Nolan great. North is also Captain Hammer. Uh, yeah, he's... Uh, oh, uh, yeah, that guy. He's the captain. Uh, yeah. Nathan Fillion. That's who it is. He plays yeah, K6. Yeah, Nathan I'm Fillion. getting Nathan Fillion and Nolan North mixed up. Now, yeah, all the Destiny like, wait, fans listening are... No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, Nolan like, North, nah. I don't think, has ever appeared in, like, a, a, a you know, an acting, traditional acting role, as far as I know. Uh, at I least nothing know. major. But Nathan Fillion is K6. But, yeah. So, uh, let me... The other thing that they're definitely improving <laughs> with Destiny, like... Well, they're improving a bunch of things with Destiny, too. Like, the gameplay is going to be... Like, relatively the same, which is good because the gameplay mechanics of it, like, the actual, like, point and shoot was the really strong point of Destiny. Oh. Like, so that's going to be very similar, but they have switched up, like, the weapons a bit, mm-hmm. and I'm really happy in the way Instead that they Instead of having it. a primary, a secondary, and a heavy, now you have, like, an energy-based weapon, an ammo-based huh. weapon. It's a kinetic energy and power. Right. So basically, like, the kinetic is just a vanilla weapon that it'll just have, like, basic shots. Like, you have a, a shotgun, or not a shotgun. Actually, I'm not sure if the, a shotgun would be included in that. See, that's another question that needs to be asked is, are the kinetic weapons going to have, like, special weapons like shotguns available or something like that? That well, I'm not maybe sure Maybe that's where it but... kind of plays off. Because the last game, they had a mix of things. Like, if you had yeah. a kinetic weapon, it could also have a... I guess nature to it. It could be yeah, yeah. It could be a fire arc weapon. Void or it could be an arc, right? Exactly. So maybe we'll be able to kind of mix and match that. Poor Blake. He's, He's born out of dead. his mind. He's dying. Well, we're wasting his life. If you want to talk or look into more about Destiny, feel free. Go check out the new trailers online. We were really impressed mm-hmm. with them. We're really excited for the beta. Um, I'm going to be joining in on the beta. We invite you guys to join us um, and jump into that. Next topic. What it's else do we some have? Good fun. Sonic Forces is coming out. Oh, oh God. Here we go. <laughs> the Sonic character creator. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this is uh, going last to be trailer, horrible. Uh, most recent trailer for it's Sonic Forces came out, and we found out who the new character was. Now, every time you hear. Now, l- let's go through Let's go through the stages of what happened with the Sonic Forces thing, right? First, we heard Sonic Forces. It's going to be like Sonic Generations. It's got old Sonic and new Sonic. Great, everybody liked Generations. Then they said there's gonna be a new character, and everybody said, "Oh, oh no," this is because be every time, every time a Sonic game uh, comes out with a feature saying there's gonna be a new secret character, it's gonna be super surprised, everybody's gonna love it, and then they hate it. But here's the thing, right? Hold on, wait, I see you. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> before, but I mean, like everybody <laughs> hates the new character, but then they showed it, and now. We have people who absolutely hate it, but also people who love it because it's a character creator. You can make your own OC. It's going to be dreadful for the internet. I'm just, oh, I'm no, just they're going to have a it. great time. Don't I'm just think. seeing it now. I I have been so disappointed by Sega in the past. The only thing I can say that will probably make me happy <coughs> is if I can be Tails <coughs> or a Tails-style character and carry dual-wielding pistols. That would be awesome. I actually don't uh, know if you can carry weapons, but are you, you can uh, assuredly make something like Tails. Are you being, uh, please, are you, is that, is that satire? Are you joking? The world may never know. I, I actually do joking. want the answer with that. Is that your Sonic OC? You seem to have given thought to this. Why do you have a Sonic OC? I just like Tails as a character. God, and that's I, edgy. 
<laughs> I, no, think about this. I, I just wonder if the OC like models. This is like an actual serious question. But will the OC models be based on existing characters in the universe, or like as far as species and everything goes, or will they introduce new species into the Sonic universe? Uh, it looks like they're doing both. Uh, from what we've seen, there's a wolf that you can be, uh, which is new, I think. Um, I, as far as the games go, I don't think we've seen a wolf before. Uh, and then there's a rabbit, which we have seen rabbit. Cream's a rabbit. Um, but outside of that, eh, not, not not much. Uh, I mean, we don't... I, I haven't looked into I, it I feel like that's like death. the pitch for this game. You know, it's, it, it's not much. At first, there's I was a lot like, of uh, custom uh, customizability with the character creation. At first, I was though. intrigued. I was like, "Okay, this looks a lot like like Sonic Adventure Battle 2 as far as gameplay goes." What they, what briefly they showed, I was like, "Hey, this looks pretty promising." But it's kind of like one of those less is more mm. things. Like as they add in different features, I can't help but think, "Please do not Sonic 06 this. Please do not Sonic 06 this." Oh no! And I welcome them Sonic 06 ing it because then I have another Game Grumps like 60 episode playthrough to look forward to. All right, you can also be a cat, so you could make a Blaze. You could make a skinny version of Big. Uh, Why so would you want to make a skinny version of Big? Froggy. People have done it, so it's a little bit too Froggy. late to ask that question. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know why people would want to do it, uh, but they you can do it if you want to. That's fine. I really, I don't even know how to feel about this game. Okay, I am so hesitant on Sonic games from now on. Yes, I've played Generations. Generations was fine. And I know that Big Red Button, or wait, was it Big Red Button who did uh, Boom? That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I understand that Big Red Button was responsible for Boom, but it seems like at this point, for every good game that the Sonic series has, it has like three bad ones. Do you want to know the only good thing that came out of Sonic Heroes? Mm -hmm. The theme song. I don't disagree. Well, I disagree with that. Heroes, I think the concept the was line, awesome. I know. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed Sonic Heroes, but it got repetitive very quickly. That was the flaw with it. The, the theme game, song's just catchy, man. The gameplay was solid, oh, no. and the mechanics worked well, <clears throat> and didn't really have any buggy issues. At least not on versions that weren't PS2. Can we just get Sonic Adventure Battle Three? For the uh, love of God, please. I don't like. all I want Sega. Well, see, here's the problem with that, uh, Jaden. That's what Sonic 06 was. Uh, it was. Except it didn't get finished, clearly. So, like, there's, like, that, when the that Sonic train game, is passed. When the Sonic game does get finished, that's a generally a good sign. Well, all the ones lately have, I think Sega figured out, huh, you know what would be great for the Sonic th series? Uh, polishing game. them and letting them be finished no, before we for, release forget them. Forget polishing. Just you know finish the game like oh my god i cannot tell you how many times i've and again i know it's big red button but it's still sonic franchise they just didn't care with boom like oh six I, I don't think it was completely their fault they were rushed out to market too i know it was rushed out to market but it's like it's the same thing with sonic 06 except sonic 06 was like bad to the point that it was laughable this was just a brand of bad that was like unfinished and very very disappointing I and i didn't even laughable. play it i just like watched 12 people play through it because every single playthrough with this game was just a gold mine of laughter so do we get sonic this year uh, i Maybe. think so yes it's supposed to release this year uh i think it's supposed to release in the Oh, I heard holiday. So holiday, yeah. Do you think we're gonna have there. playability at uh, GameStop Expo or E3 this year? Uh, I, I don't, don't know about know. GameStop Expo. I don't think it was gonna. There might be a playable level from E3. We've seen some gameplay footage, so they might have something. Yeah. Uh, like like maybe you'll be able to play through Green Hill Zone, uh, and maybe they'll let you play with a new character because aside from the fact that you can, he's. A, uh, mm -hmm. visually different, and he, it's your own personal OC character. Mm -hmm. uh, he's mechanically different, too. He's fast like Sonic. It, you can see that he runs fast, so hopefully that means that it won't be bogged down by, by all the other previous uh, new character-ness that you get from other ones, but he's got some uh, interesting mechanics of his own. Last thing, what system do you think we're going to see it, see it demoed on at E3? 
Uh, well, I mean, the the big thing that they're doing is with the Switch, uh, but it, I think it's releasing on most other modern consoles. I know it's on all yeah. platforms. I'm just saying, what do you think is the best platform it is I don't, at this point? The Switch, I, I guess the Switch, because I can't... God, I almost don't want it to be. Am I, I would right? love it. I would really love it if we just walked into E3 and all Xbox or all Microsoft showed was Sonic, uh, just Sonic 06, <laughs> and hey, here's the Scorpio uh, and Sonic. Maybe it'll be like, uh, maybe it's... it'll be like one of the other E3 years where it's just like, um, this is a third party title. You can show off part of it. You get the better part of it. Yeah. Uh, you all mean right. the Ever War? Yes. Well, we were going to keep a close eye on Sonic. Who we're going to did that keep last? A... Kingdom Hearts 3? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Because they were sure coming. Oh, man, I almost forgot about Kingdom Hearts. Well, we'll get how, to that. How we'll, get that to that. we'll get to that. We'll get okay. to that. Are, are you enjoying the wave? We'll talk about that during the How do you like 2.9, Blake? Does that make you happy? Uh, wait, there's 2.9 coming out? I don't know. I'm probably no. Sure. I don't think so. I think 2.8 had all of, uh, finished all of the side yeah, games. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm mostly just joking. Because oh, it's like still. to me, I would, I really want them to be like, okay, there's a 2.9, then a 2.95, <laughs> then three. <laughs> okay, so speaking of, uh, so so how's that even getting in 4.44 coming along? I still don't know where it is, and that's <laughs> not gaming related. <laughs> no, it's not. But uh, okay. I think it's releasing though. I'm starting to see some stirrings about it. We'll see. And I can't Only wait. time will tell. I can't wait for them to Ave and Callie in the ending again. It's going to be great. All right. So before we get into E3, uh, we were going to talk about. Um, first off, YouTubers keep getting uh, swatted. They keep getting swatted, man. Like left and right, like flies. Just only a different kind of swatting. Jaden, your jokes are terrible. You I know. Should feel bad. That's the point. You should feel bad. I don't feel bad. You should feel very bad. Anyway, uh, so you're saying they're all I fly before they get swatted? I, I was gonna cover a has swatting gone too far, but we kind of briefly discussed it before yeah, the podcast. Like, the, the way Please put, stop. For the love of God, started, it's an awful thing, and people shouldn't do it. Why yeah, do they do like, it? It's because running awful entertainment. Human beings. And they should get arrested for it because they it's a crime. do get arrested for it. See, that's the thing. When you phrased it, when you opened up, like, has swatting gone too far? It's always gone too far. Right. Like, since the first swat, all it does is waste police resources for no reason and interfere with other people's life. It can even traumatize people. Mm -hmm. yep. It's just not an okay thing to freaking do. Oh, yeah. Like, thankfully, most people just, you know, it's like, oh, I got swatted or something, mm. and then it's, like, over within an hour or two, and the people who, like, make the call, who are dumb enough to think, oh, hey, I'm just gonna, you know, call on them. There's no way that they're going to arrest me a state away or something like that. No. And to quote the innocent Etika and CND, I was just trying to get a Fruit Loop shake, man. Yep. That was it. Come on, bro. But, uh, Fruit I digress. Loop. Anyway... The topic I want to discuss now, we got to see another sneak peek mm -hmm. in an ARMS Direct this week. Yes. I want to briefly touch on this, because technically, it's going to be coming out simultaneously with E3, or just after. It comes out mm -hmm. literally the Friday after E3. Yep. So, they, I think on Tuesday morning, they're showing the Nintendo live event, mm -hmm. and then they're doing uh, Nintendo Treehouse all day Wednesday. They're doing an arms tournament for invited players on Thursday and a Splatoon tournament that day as well. Yep. Uh, and then it comes out Friday. It's really a good idea to, it is. to release something so soon after. Um, oh, yeah, and this is a little bit off topic from the E3, but I've heard that they're apparently the DLC fighters that they've announced. They're all free. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that. And I love so, it so much. that's one thing that I want to touch on is they showed this direct, they... Like, at first, I'm like, yeah, it looks like a pretty interesting fighting game, but now I'm sitting here like, man, I actually have interest in buying this game. But first, yeah. it was just like, well, yeah, I'll buy it to kill some time. But now it's like, okay, I have to have this day one. And it I didn't feel so that fun. way about it before. It looks so much fun. Yeah. Like, oh, man. I keep on seeing it get better. Like, when it was released, I thought that it was this kind of weird, off-the-wall kind of idea. And I usually like those ideas, but I was still a little bit skeptical of it. And then as they released more and more, and as they talked about it more and more, I was like, this is, like, a really good fighting game. Like, even for people who really like to min-max characters, this is... this is Also, if there's not a character named min-max, I'm going to be disappointed. But it just looks... It looks so interesting. 
It's just, it just looks like a really fun game, and mm-hmm. they've expanded on the concept in a much, much wider way than I thought they were going they to. They introduced several new characters. Yep. Um, one of which has an unfair advantage because it has a sidekick robot. Whatever, dude. Okay, that's fair. Whatever. No, I'm not, um, not going to complain. Generally, puppeteer characters are only good if you're, like, god level. <laughs> it's... Uh... What? No. Um, but anyway, so the character, the new character design looks cool. I yep. mean... Considering the fact that it is a game about arms and really the only customization you can do is, wow, their arms look different. Like, that's like the main point. They actually did a surprisingly good job on having yeah. some diversity within the character cast. It looks pretty good. Um, I think with the upcoming dates, so they have some beta test dates coming up um, starting this heck out of it. coming weekend and the weekend after. It's going to be two weekends in a row. Yep. Um, at certain specific times, you'll probably get to play with a lot of the characters, if not all of the characters. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but one of the things I want to touch on is it's not just a fighting game. Mm-hmm. Did you see they have a party in multiplayer mode? Yes. Huh. And it's like got party games and it's like a free for all. Yeah. Oh, so like what Smash Bros did. Like there. volleyball yeah, exactly. and a couple, Think a couple like other three fun... dimensional yeah. Smash Bros. Yeah. It's kind of. I mean, because I, I guess if you was was Smash Fest, Smash. what did they call it? The the section in the the Wii U version where you could uh, have run multiple and... people. Yeah, they had a board game. Uh, um, we could run around and collect things, and mm-hmm. it, it was it was real fast paced. And you I know, remember that. Like, yeah, 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 um, kind of. So there will be quite a bunch of um, different different things to do there. Um, I just I just like that it's not going to be one of those games where it's like okay, I played through the story or I did like the, the ten character thing. Like Smash Brothers has such a good replay value because of its community mm-hmm. and it has such a huge following. And a lot of the worries and concerns that I had initially about ARMS is that it would never be able to replicate that following. No. Um, well, I mean, it's a game that shows up at EVO. It's like a full-on fighting game. Right, it's just yeah. it's a full-on fighting game. It's like boxing. And yeah. that's another thing, too, is I think actually during the beta, beta test days, we're not just going to have to use motion controls. I think they're going to give people the opportunity to use the standardized controls. And I think they actually hit more on point with the standardized controls this time around because they... They showed off how when you're playing online multiplayer or even local multiplayer, you can connect up to eight switches again yep. and have 16 players total, so two per switch. Well, so motion controls or actual um, handheld controls. I still want to see this being something that, that shows up at Apex and you have like uh, some actual <laughs> like pro players just boxing, air boxing each other. Yeah, see, I w- I agree that it's <coughs> oh my god, it's just like uh, what I said about Splatoon. You know, like. The reason I didn't play as much of Splatoon as I could on the uh, on the Wii U was because I absolutely despised using the gamepad. But with the more standardized controls on the Switch, like during the beta, I was in love with it. Mm. So it's the same deal, and I get why people want standardized. But I feel like it it's not going to be the same if you're not punching the air while holding mm. the Joy-Cons. Because that just looks like such a fun thing. Well, yeah. it depends on how well they, they implement it. Uh, I remember one of the best games that ever had motion control, surprisingly, was uh, actually Wii Kill Zone, Killzone 3. Killzone what? 3, uh, if you had the move controller, they had a peripheral for it, and people got uh, better performance out of using the move controller uh, and the gun peripheral than they did using standard controllers. That's an actual thing. You can look it up. Oh. Uh, so so that hmm. if you, you can should. you can make motion controls work really well. We might just have to wait until Sony rips off Nintendo though first. I mean honestly, I don't think there's going to be an unfair advantage <coughs> either way. It's just your play style. <coughs> yeah. Well, and I think uh, the ability to do use both motion and standardized controls is going to be a huge uh, factor when it comes to bringing in both the hardcore and casual crowd. I mean, I don't necessarily see tournament players getting up on their feet and actually boxing, like if this becomes an eSport, which it has a pretty good eSport interest. I don't think it's actually going to happen that way. But I hope it does. I hope it happens. (laughs) I don't think it will. Uh, But, okay, um, the last thing I'll touch on, we have like 30 more seconds in this segment. Um, The last thing I'll touch on is with Splatoon... Um, with Splatoon as well as ARMS and the motion controls, how much of the gyro functionality do you do you see? Do you see them actually opting or having an opt-out function on Splatoon by the time that comes at launch? I honestly am not sure. And to be truthful, it's not nearly as bad as it was with the Wii U. But if they did have an opt-out, I would say that it'd be fine because I mean I play shooters, so still. 
Yeah. I think it should be mandatory, like Star Fox Zero. That game was great. <laughs> okay. Like, so... This is why you're not the comedy relief. What? I'm not either. I'm terrible jokes. Terrible I'm not jokes. either. We have no comedy relief. Yep. So <laughs> suck it. This is a terrible podcast. Get over it. Okay. If you ask. Okay. okay. All right. You anyway, can, you can tell off our audience if you want. Yeah. I'll welcome them. I will give you all a hug. Okay, you do that. Have hug. fun. Oh, He'll be the guy at the expos too. and the cons. Gave them all. Oh, he just there's, hugged the mic. There's a hug. He just hugged he the mic. The hug. I'm pretty sure that just messed up the audio. Anyway, who cares? Um, it's a terrible podcast. Anyway, this is just for, <laughs> just for giggles. Anyway, right. going on. Just giggles. We're going to take a quick, uh, ten second break, for ad time. With yes, with all the, and then uh, and then we're gonna Doctor come right back. Talk to the three. Old fashioned dick. Hi, watch this ad. Thanks. Yeah, you know they're going to put one in right here. So that's why we're giving you a heads up. It's Just totally an ad. Don't go away. There's totally going to be an ad right now. And when we come back, we are going to talk about Has E3 predictions. Has this ever happened to you? Have you done this very specific thing that, you know, yeah, everyone has to do? Well, now you don't have to do it anymore. Now there's a wet jet. Okay, uh, sorry for that ad. Now the real ad. All right, enjoy. Be back in 10. for you guys to understand, all right? Look, here's how it goes, all right? A badger-sized chipmunk is easier to fight than 100 chipmunk-sized badgers. I don't care if you disagree. You're all wrong. You're entitled to your opinion, but your opinion is wrong. Hi, thank you for coming back to Info Arcade. I hope you enjoyed that advertisement. Welcome to Amazon Prime customer support. How may I help you today? Did you bring your work with you today, Nate? I don't work there. No. <laughs> you sound very practiced. It doesn't... You really don't need practice to sound soul crushed. Today we're talking about E3, because E3 is... Just kidding, I actually really and love Amazon Prime. You should totally is, get Amazon Prime. Sponsor us! I, for the love of God! No. No, I don't... No, thanks. Thanks, no. Today we're talking about E3, because E3 is a month away, and this is a monthly podcast, therefore this is the only chance we'll have to talk about it until after it's already done. False. We're going to talk about it a lot. You're right. It'll be after the event. But we're not talking about it until the week of. We're going to bring you guys some live coverage, um, live reaction. We may do like a live stream via Facebook, or we may do we, we may do like Twitch. Who knows? When we, we figure should. out. We will. I, I'm, I'm taking off work for this. I don't know if I told you guys this. Oh, yeah. I should mm. probably do that. I'm taking off work for E3. I'm hosting at my house. You guys bring snacks. Sorry, listeners, you're not invited. But what you day? guys can virtually join us through our live stream uh, that we will be doing. What day exactly is it that all the uh, the conferences are going to be? Mm. I think it's... I, so is typically... It the um, no, no, no. Because it's usually during the it's weekday. It's the... Um, if it's on a it Wednesday, is the 12th, it. 13th, 14th, and 15th. The 12th is the Monday before E3. Technically, yeah. the expo opens to the public mm -hmm. on the 13th. That's usually when it does... Yeah. Um, and then Nintendo does theirs always that, that morning. They always do theirs like the first day of the expo. Mm -hmm. Bethesda, e EA, Microsoft, Sony, they always like to get in early on the action. And sometimes they do theirs on that Monday night um, on the 12th. So <coughs> we'll be starting on the 12th. Um, yeah. We'll go into the 13th. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cover pretty much everything. Um, give you guys our... Our feedback and opinions, we're going to be uh, jiving off of some other media uh, companies as well, we'll get some of their coverage. But um, let's go ahead and talk predictions, because while I am excited for uh, being able to cover everything live and all of that jazz, what I will tell you is there's a lot to cover here in predictions. This is probably one of the most exciting E3 sure. years sure. in a while. Yeah. Would you guys agree with me? Sorry, what? No idea. This is one of the most exciting E3 years we've had in years. It's very How exciting. How can you say that before it starts? I don't, I don't agree Just with that. Think, uh, okay, last the year. The hype isn't as palpable as it was last back year, in like the year before, uh, and the year before. You, can you think of anything in the past three years that got you so excited to the point where you're like, oh, this is going to be probably the best E3 we've had in a long time? Oh, Honestly. not at all. No. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this one shows a lot more promise because... One, we are seeing a couple of the next-gen consoles from Sony and well, Microsoft, not, supposedly. 
really I'm, next gen? Yes, but they are the next the, big thing. It's the continuous thing that they were talking about last generation. Right. Like, we'll see if it pans out properly. But. I mean, right. I'm excited for E3 as much as I'm excited, but there's not, like, a hype train going. If anything, one of them's going to come in and generate a hype train, but E3 itself is very much sitting at the station. Mm-hmm. Well, if I can give my, my intake, I... Mm, your intake? I, what are you... I, okay. Are you a vacuum? No, no, he's a hype train. How? Wait, what? In, trains no, he's have a ve- vehicles have intakes, and he's a train. He's a coal train. I'm not. I don't think you understand how I, basic engineering works. No, see, he he runs on coal. Coal has to require input. Air to function. Therefore, it takes. It has an input. Intake. I will give you my input for the <laughs> love of God. How did we get that far off the track? Because we were in the hype train. You did it, you gotta, bro. Wait, you did hold it. on. What? What just... All right. Jayden anyway. did a joke. Oh, my God. For, for you guys that weren't in the room to see what just happened, um, Blake tried for, to high-five me for that amazing that pun. And I did the cold turkey, you know, where he goes up for a high-five and I just put a fist right there and now, it's like see, a turkey. Then that was Blake's fault for not immediately grabbing the hand and shaking the hand. You're right. I should have done that. Damn. Fail. I lost. Fail. That anyway, was my, that was my so, mistake. Uh, I will not make that same I'll give my input. Twice. I think this is one of the most exciting E3s that we've had in a while okay. on the basis of one, we have a new Nintendo console mm-hmm. that actually is proving to be successful out the gate. Yes. It has sold more units in the first two months than the Xbox One and PS4 did on their launch. And mm-hmm. theirs were, their consoles were released at a holiday season. Mm-hmm. And the Switch has sold 2.8 and they only sold 2 million. I, anyway, it's it's incredible. And I'm very excited about that as a Nintendo fan. Okay. From a Microsoft standpoint, hmm, I'm not all that excited. I do know that if they are making a new console, I hope that they are bringing new IPs or games that I'm going to be very excited about. I, I really do miss the days where Microsoft was a actual original ip making system they were a machine for Wait. making great games that were authentic and new what did they have they had halo gears of war mm. uh i think they had uh the uh odyssey games fable uh yeah fable they had they had several good ips sunset overdrive was pretty good out the gate for the xbox one yeah but it had um, a playability of like what six hours and then you were done with it okay but well, all i'm saying is that I, I have faith in insomniac but they used to mm. make they used to make games that were original exclusive games and now basically all they are is a at-home pc port that you can play your games that you could play on your pc but also on your home console in your living room see which, well, i'm excited if we want to do that. that i'm excited mm. to be able to play halo on pc that's exciting yeah you? it'll be Woo-hoo. the first time for an how long? When did the first years, game come out? Years. Uh, Halo Early Wars 2 2000s. just came out. Is that a Halo game? Yes. That one's on PC. Technically. Anyway. But I, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, and I hope that they do follow through with it. And then let's look at Sony. Look at the VR, how that's like really taken off. Like, mm-hmm. We have a whole topic discussion on VR coming up here in a minute about kind of our predictions. But... My opinion is probably contrary to most, <coughs> but I still am excited to see what, what happens. It's going to be interesting. I mean, yeah. definitely, Microsoft is definitely going to be the lesser of, well, unless they pull something like wild and crazy out of nowhere, they're probably going to be the lesser Record of the two. Three. I mean, that would probably make everyone not want to buy a Scorpio. <coughs> But basically, like I won't record it. Do I just well. all I want Microsoft to do? Concept, if we're just gonna cool. lead right into like our predictions on stuff, all I want Microsoft to do, I want them to reveal the Scorpio, which they've already kind of done, mm-hmm. and yeah, made then a actually, there it's not going to happen. Like one of my predictions is we're gonna see Cuphead again with no release date. I would love a release date, but honestly. I haven't turned on my Xbox One in like months. Yeah, it'll be so, like so unless they give me something for this, it's just they'll nothing. do a segment on Cuphead. They'll be, everybody will be like, "Wow, Cuphead! That game looks so cool." It'll they'll say it'll release uh, sometime by the end of this year, and then it'll get delayed down the line, and then we'll see it in next year's E3. Yep, like so, we have for the past two years. Like they've already announced that Microsoft is going to be the dinky 
I, I say dinky, and I mean dinky. Like, if you look at the floor plan, mm-hmm. which you actually showed me, you have, like... Nintendo and Sony on these big huge floor plans and then in the second building mixed in with all the other little ones there's just Microsoft with a slightly bigger <laughs> venue than the little ones mm-hmm. and it's I'm not disappointed I understand why they're doing it but I mean it's their own fault they launched themselves as a direct competitor to Steam and started competing with themselves mm. so unless the Scorpio is fantastic which I actually have money on it being well then it's just kind of I don't think, disappointing. I don't think competing with Steam is a mistake. I think competing with Steam is a good idea. The problem is that their store is awful. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. They launched. They launched a. Com- they launched as a. Com- well, they were technically already a competitor over Steam, but they launched into like. They basically threw a sinking ship at a warship, basically. So uh, Steam isn't sinking. No, no, no. Microsoft no, is the Microsoft. sinking ship. Yeah. To the warship that is Steam, I don't think Microsoft is sinking either. Yeah, they're not. They make a lot of money it, elsewhere it was outside just, the Xbox. I know they make a lot of money outside <laughs> the Xbox, but that was what they launched their. Whatever. This this is what I think I want to happen, and this is what will probably happen in reality as far as Microsoft goes. Please, I think I I would love to see some new IPs. I would love to sh- have them like show off a ton of cool stuff. Remember that uh really that really cool pirate rare game that came out. Or like uh, they showed last year D three. Yes, it's got yeah. a lot of mixed reviews out the gate. From what I'm hearing, it's mm-hmm. not been released yet. It's supposed to come out this year. I want to see a little bit more on that. That is an original mm-hmm. IP from from Microsoft's brand Rare, um, and I know that they have some other exclusives probably hidden away. This is what is probably going to happen. That I don't want to see is that they, as much as they say, oh yeah, the Scorpio and the Xbox One are completely compatible with each other, and we're not going to create exclusive content. No, 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 no. They are going to create exclusive content. There is no reason to have a beast of a machine Mm -hmm. to not have exclusive content. Sure, the peripherals, the controllers, the the headsets, all that kind of stuff will work on it. The Xbox One games will work on the Scorpio, but they have not promised or guaranteed that the exclusive Xbox One Scorpio-made games will work on the Xbox. So we're probably not going to see that. We probably do see some kind of VR to compete with the successful PlayStation VR that's kind of taken off. That's just going to... I, I think it will too, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I, those are the things I think will happen versus the things, um, you know, we'll see. The the only thing I can I can think will happen is they show a couple games, and then they fail where they have always failed the year last year and and the year before that was they show off this great big hey we're gonna do this as a console provider we're gonna do this as a console provider and they do the one thing that fans want to happen and they they know it and they just don't do it and that is actually show games they will not show games like they should unless it has to do with being exclusive well, to xbox scorpio wasn't that their criticism last year I'm yes sure so that was the criticism last year and the year before that no i think the year before that they they came back with more games because they got criticism the previous year about it i mean um but what do you think we'll have like a i mean actually no i think last year they did show a lot of games uh, they they, they talked cut out more the sports about, things, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and it was basically like uh, all games at that time. <laughs> but mm, they weren't like, you know, the, the E3 has lately I, seemed to be the same show every year. I find it uh, funny for Microsoft that all the things that they were talking <laughs> about being the thing that makes the Xbox One, the Xbox One, and being like an exclusive, amazing platform for gamers everywhere mm-hmm. as an all-in-one system. The whole purpose they named the Xbox One, the Connect, they'd be able to say, hey, Cortana, or hey, Xbox, Snap, and they'd be able to run two features at once. Mm-hmm. They took all that away. So everything that they've been trying to build on the Xbox One mm-hmm. has, has basically gone into the toilet at this point. And this year needs to be the year where they step in and say, hey, we're going to redeem it, and we're bringing this to the table, and we're just going to talk games and we're going to talk about our new Scorpio platform because, God forbid, if they don't mm-hmm. do... If, if they don't replicate what they've done with the Xbox One on the Scorpio, then they'll be in good shape. But if they do the exact same thing that they've done with the Xbox One, they're going to be in trouble. And a lot of fans, like myself, <clears throat> are going to be sitting here looking over at the Sony aisle of the, of, the, mm-hmm. of the room and saying, hmm, maybe I should go invest in a PS4 Pro now. Maybe I should go get that PS4 Neo because... I'm I'm uncertain about where Xbox stands as yeah. a future. Like when I think about uh, Xbox currently, it's it's reminiscent of quite a few things that have happened down the line. Like 
this is nothing new. Like, Nintendo was experiencing something very similar with the Wii U, and then they've come back with a vengeance with the Switch. But with what they're doing right now, it's very weird because they're floundering and they're not showing very many signs of like resuscitating at all no it's like they're going to try and throw it out with a scorpio but i forget has have has the price tag for the scorpio been put out yet no but with the compute power i can tell you it's going to be expensive yeah see that's the problem that's the main problem not necessarily ssds are not getting cheaper flash is not getting cheaper in fact most IT companies currently, mm-hmm. flash prices and uh, RAM prices are going up yep. right now. Um, Hewlett Packard and Dell and several other vendors are uh, basically making their servers more expensive, which to me just says that end user computing units like computers or even video game consoles, those prices will go up. They have like, they can't just be given out at a loss. Like Nintendo has done so many years, yeah. and now they're not doing. No, like one of the, success, one of the huge things with the Switch funny. was its very reasonable price point. But mm-hmm. the problem is, uh, one of the main barriers to entry that the original Xbox One had was its price tag, which was insane mm-hmm. for what it was. And now they're releasing a console that is ver- that is borderlining them just saying, we want to make a computer for games. Yeah. And I'm like, well, well I mean, what that's what all year. consoles mm-hmm. are, technically. But, like, well, they're moving towards, like, really. we just want to make a gaming computer and not a game console real quick just so can you guys remind expensive. me what the ps4 pro price point is i believe it's 300 f- is it it's either 300 the, the or 300 ps4 f- pro <coughs> oh, no oh i'm well, sorry been out at least a year now video. right so yeah I but, but either way 300 i want to say I, I thought it was more than that i thought no. it was like 400 i'm here hold on like if anyway you want. The, the, yeah. this is the point i'm trying to make why, why you guys undercover that yes is if it's undercover. anything higher if you guys, um, if you guys really look, think about this and look at it as, this way, is that the um, the PS4 is four hundred. It's such a good price point. Okay, four hundred bucks, and that's for like the base entry level, like one terabyte mm. one. There's I would not call that a two. good entry price. Like three hundred and fifty for the PS4 was a good entry price. Right, but this is, but guess what? This is a the four K console. This is the best thing they have on the market. And the thing is, they're going to be releasing the Neo. And the Scorpio, and both of those are going to... The Xbox is going to be released as a Scorpio, I should say. And they're both going to be priced higher than that. I can guarantee, I can guarantee it. They're going to be 500 plus. And so, this is my point. As a as a economic spender yeah. and a gamer, I'm going to look at yeah. look at everyone's Dude. platform. And this was the big Stop argument that. for the Switch mm-hmm. was, Oh man, this Nintendo Switch is priced way too high. For $300, I can go buy an Xbox One, and I can go ahead and buy... Or I could go ahead and buy a PS4 for that same price and get a huge library of games out the gate, and I don't have to wait for anything. <laughs> no, that was an argument that people used. Was uh, like, <laughs> is that an argument people use? People were using That's, that argument. It's not going to happen. Here's to argue the happen. price point. If if the Scorpio launches at three hundred dollars, uh, all Nintendo has to do is say, "Hey, holiday season's here. Let's drop the price. We're yeah. already making money on the Switch. We're selling at a profit, unlike every other console." We can afford to drop the price oh, of that. And I can tell you, you can this, drop the it down Scorp- with $200 for the holiday season. Right, but the Scorpio and the PS4 Pro aren't going to sell for $300. They're going to sell for $500 plus. I don't know about that. I, don't I think, think they'll sell it at a loss and they could probably Do get it Do you realize how much those GPUs and CPUs I cost? I understand, but the thing about it is I cannot see them thinking that that's a good idea. Right, because you know what the biggest problem about it is? Mm. Who's going to invest that kind of money if there's not games to view it? view and look at it and well, be like, see, amazing, lots, I want it. Well, that's their big advantage of uh, not making a new console. They're just It's, it's yeah. sold as an Xbox, so they have the whole <coughs> Xbox One library. So they say. And if it's backwards compatible, then you also have the 360 library. Doesn't this sound a little familiar to the Xbox 360 when it launched? Uh, they called, they catered it and called it a new console, but it was supposed to be backwards compatible, and look how that turned out. Well, I mean, it that's true of all of was, three though. of the consoles. No, it the actually old. was, straight up. Sort like, of. The older ones were. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't backwards compatible. But the and PS3 like also list. came out saying it was backwards compatible, and they dropped that feature. The only yeah. one who really kept it at that time was the Wii. Right. But the, but all this going on to say is that it, we're going to get into this, oh, yeah, this this isn't a new console. I, we, we can assure you this isn't a new console, and it, it's going to be a new console. 
It kind they're of just isn't. Gonna, um, they're, we don't know yet. The architecture's the same, so which means uh, that it runs the stuff uh, natively. They don't have to emulate anything. According to various... Um, by the way, just real quick. According to various speculas- uh, spe- uh, speculations... Speculation. 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 Speculations. Speculations. What? The okay. Neo is no, slated to that. supposedly be 350. So, yeah, 350, 400 is where I place it at. Yeah. Okay, and if it is 350, <clears throat> 400, then guess what? As a gamer, I'm I'm gonna be like, okay, yep. that's a that's a decent price for what kind of compute you're talking about, but what am I getting to play on it that I'm not getting to play or experience on my regular Xbox One? Oh no, that was the PS4 Neo, not the Xbox Scorpio. I can't find anything on the Scorpio. Oh right, you're not gonna see anything on the Scorpio. No, 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 well, no, no. price isn't that yet. <laughs> yeah, I know, which is not a good. That was sign. PS4 Pro. The that the that the Scorpio and the Neo are gonna be five hundred dollars plus. I guarantee you. I don't think so. They will. Anyway, um, anyone else have anything to add on Microsoft real quick? Yeah, uh, who's going to be this year's Epic Yarn? Oh, the uh, the adorable game that actually yeah, releases on both consoles. So Well, uh, did it? Because I remember I'm actually, coming in. Are we jumping into Nintendo Xbox before specific. we jump into Sony? I think we should do Sony well, and then Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo is a bigger one subject. one real quick thing. This actually just popped into my head, and I wonder if maybe this would be true. Okay. I, th- I started thinking about games that would be announced under the Xbox One, and, like, the more I thought, I only thought about one thing, and it just got recently announced. Mm-hmm. Darksiders 3. Hmm. I thought about that for a second. I'm like, that totally fits, like, the branding that Microsoft tends to bring to E3. Oh, yeah. So does, uh, maybe they'll it show be, that, even though it it's... Microsoft exclusive? It's not exclusive, no, it but be. I think it'll be shown so, on Microsoft. It's cool that they're stage. making a third one instead of just rebooting it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they brought both of the games back. Or, well, they remastered <laughs> the first So, game. to recap, what we're saying is <clears throat> we're probably not going to see a whole lot of exclusives, if any. We're not going to see a whole lot of game support, probably for the Scorpio, directly. If they do show oh, any well, game support, it'll just be Xbox um, One games that can be ported and put on Xbox One Scorpio in higher resolution. All of the Xbox One you, maybe games. there'll be a Gears of War. The last one did pretty well from what I heard. It's yeah, too but soon I think it's too soon. Game. Yeah, and they're not doing a Halo. Nope. So I feel like we have to see some new IPs. I mean, what else have the Microsoft Studios been doing? And cancel Scalebound. Okay. Boy, that's a rumor to let's, talk about. Let's talk about this real quick because <laughs> this does kind of fall into the Microsoft deal. We all have different opinions on it. Scale, scale bound. In case you don't know, is a really big hyped game for Microsoft. The Microsoft has the trademark and the patent on. Mm-hmm. And up until now, it was canceled. Yep. And now it was like, oh hey, um, here's here's the deal. We get to play this game that everyone's looking for. Oh no, we canceled it. Yep. And then it's like, okay, it's been canceled for a year, two years now at this mm-hmm. point. Huh? And then no, not no. no, no, no. What? Not it's only long? been canceled for like three months, dude. Yeah, the cancel announcement. But came it's been pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, is what I'm saying. Like it, it was, was only enough. pushed for like two years, come to think of it. Okay, but I'm saying it yeah. practically should have been like, canceled two years ago. It should have been if it was, but the, the, but the befuddling thing about it was that they canceled it so far into its development. Right. If that was weird. And now well, this is the weird part. Well, they're saying it wasn't done. Well, right. I mean, the game was nearly done, but they had problems with quality, and they canceled it for that reason. It's like what Disney did with thirteen thirteen. Mm. Yeah, but the difference with thirteen thirteen is that was because it went from one publisher and owner of it of the IP to a completely different another owner of the IP yeah, I think yeah. we taking over an a, entire studio. I think we were looking at a Sonic O Six situation. Uh, they decided the quality didn't meet what the standards. Yeah, I don't think thirteen thirteen is a good comparison. They said, "Hey, let's let's uh or sorry, unlike Sega, they said, uh, let's not release that game." Yep. Yeah. But uh, <coughs> we'll see. We don't know enough about it to say. Uh, could be, could be. Uh, actually, the what we do know, fault, but we'll see. What we do know is that they've reinstated the trademark. Mm-hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. We all have different opinions on what it could mean, but um, to me, them just extending their trademark is saying, "Hey, we're just trying to hold the patent down because we've obviously shown off this idea." And we just want to make sure that no other company is going to pick up anything on this. Because if we I mean, get were... rid of our trademark or the name, then, you know, we could lose a lot of money to another one of our competitors. There were whisperings that after it was canceled that both Nintendo and Sony were going to try and go after and just, like, straight up buy it and try to port it. Mm-hmm. And I completely supported that. I thought it would well, have been too much late better. Now. And now, I think that's why they decided to extend it. It was like, 
Yep. Well, if this has got all this hype and all the success, success, we definitely don't want to hand it off to our competitors. Well, yeah, yeah. A company they, won't let go of a property unless they think they can make money for uh, more money selling it than they can uh, with the property. So, yeah. you um, know, that's why we keep getting Fantastic Four movies every like three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Because well, you didn't know about that. Uh, it's there was another issue. one. Well, uh, no, not yet because the okay, last one just God. came out. We probably oh, won't God. see it for another like no, no, three no. or five I, years. I know about the Marvel copyright issues. If you're talking about like <laughs> that, Sony was owned or Spider Man was licensed to Sony, and then Fox owns like X Men and Fantastic Four. Yeah, so but Fox I has understand. to make a movie out uh, in order to keep their uh, hold on Fantastic it's, Four. And no matter how and good or bad terrible. it is, they just have to do yeah, it. Yeah, they just yeah, have exactly. to make it. They so, make it to keep it. <laughs> that's you're, it. So, you're absolutely right. That uh, is the situation to a T. And but, so maybe that's why they have one guy working in a studio on scale bound. One guy, just to say I, that they're I still working. Uh, <laughs> no, this anyway. is like Battlefield 3. Anyway, yeah. we talked a lot about that. Considering <laughs> that it's the 3. tiniest venue for, uh, like, the thing, I wonder how long we're going to talk about Sony. So, <laughs> to sum up Microsoft, Scorpio, Scorpio, where for uh, thou, Scorpio, what are you? Tell us about yourself and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so that is Doc, Microsoft. Doc, you eat my wallet. <laughs> I do not know. I don't know if I invest in you or not, but... Now is your time to shine, Microsoft. I had better as hell not have an attached connect. Otherwise, thou shall perish. Oh, and in the red corner, we have... No, and in the blue corner, we have... Well, technically... The competitor. Here in the green corner, we have Microsoft showing off what little scrapings they have left in a vain attempt to keep going. And in the blue corner, we have... The PlayStation... Which has been the sales giant of the console mm-hmm. generation currently. I mean, nobody... They pulled nobody, a full rehearsal from last they did. time. Yeah. They did. No, it's funny because early on in the console war, it's like Xbox is... Mm-hmm. Xbox like, 360. No, 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 no. They no, swapped no. roles. Uh, they did between Xbox 360 mm-hmm. and the uh, PlayStation 3. But let's look at this. At the very beginning of the Xbox One PS4 console ro- war, dude, Sony was struggling. They mm-hmm. were this close to declaring bankruptcy... Because of their other business ventures outside of just video games, <coughs> they had a lot of issues with uh, oh. with their manufacturing. Like they had those terrible floods in Indonesia, yeah. all, and all, there's so much happening within within the company itself that it really slowed down the market. And not to mention the sales at the beginning of the console race for this generation weren't there for mm-hmm. PlayStation Four. People were buying Xbox Ones. And then it just went. Whoop. And then Sony did the unthinkable. They started showing off IPs, and they started showing off games. And guess what? I can't believe it, but to no, to, to some crazy surprise, gamers actually like good video games. Can wow, you imagine that? that? Man, I wouldn't have Oh my that. gosh. I, I'm a gamer. I'm shocked. Tell me what I want. Yeah, they have a lot and more so, exclusives than uh, Microsoft. Absolutely. Yeah. And next thing you know, we see the sales numbers for PlayStation rise, and the Xbox stay steady or drop. And... Mm. That was that. Like that's all we've seen so far on Sony is just they've continued to dominate the market. There was no Nintendo competitor at this point. No. Nope. And they didn't see Nintendo as a threat mm. with the Wii U. I still don't think they necessarily see Nintendo as a threat on anything except see. in the handheld market because Sony continues to have its butt handed to it. No, everybody likes Nintendo. I've re- yeah. I'll, I'll be when, on the handheld. I'm, I'm saying like, on no. the handheld market, no, 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 Sony like... continues to have its butt handed to it. Well, but yeah. now Nintendo is making a comeback in, in the, the United States. States. <laughs> See, the uh, in, no, the no, 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 no. Like, they, Japan. The 3DS very, outsold the Vita. The 3DS outsold the Vita, but oh god, it's very technical because what sells in Japan and what sells in the United States is sometimes completely different because mm-hmm. of differing well, ideals. Yeah, they like uh, handhelds because they're always on the go. They don't buy consoles. They like handhelds, but they also a lot of people idealize what is very like pretty. So, like, if it's bigger and has better graphics, people will buy it. And this is very true in Japan. At least from what I've told. I've listened mm-hmm. to the 3DS stuff sold the PS Vita. I think there might be some... Uh, it didn't it's sell a, poorly. It just... It did, neither sold. of them sold poorly in Japan. They're <coughs> both direct competitors with each other. You can but tell it's because nothing the game like library in the United PS Vita States. is all weeb games. Like, basically, in the States, the 3DS reigns supreme. But in Japan, the Vita is still a very viable competitor to mm-hmm. the 3DS. But the truth is... Is that right now... Nintendo is ruling it. Nintendo is ruling the handheld market with the release of the Switch. Well, so outside of the handheld Boy. market, they don't really see like they're, see that they're losing any money. They haven't really done anything that 
is to be talked about really with the Vita in a while. And they so dropped they dropped support, support for it. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They it's haven't done console anything. Of them. So to that to that point, <coughs> Sony's like, well, yeah, we're just gonna focus on where we find ourselves to be giants and where it's showing that we're number one and that's our home console. Mm -hmm. And they haven't let anyone down. They've been doing really good with their IPs. The last terrible IP um, that we really saw was Order eighteen eighty six. That was the last real bad Still need to IP play that. from. Um, Apparently, it was on sale for like four dollars. But then they released Bloodborne, huge redem redemption factor there with Bloodborne, mm -hmm. um, and then moving on well, up now with this. I mean, this new Zelda competitor that they just released the Horizon same Zero week Dawn. as Zelda. Yes, Horizon Zero Dawn was so good, and so many good, so many people were talking about. I'm so about glad it. to hear that was good. Guerrilla Games is a pretty quality studio, yeah, though. I they agree. Have been for a while. I, I really want to play it. And then, well, that's not even talking about VR. This is just standard gaming. Like, we'll get to oh, VR. Yeah. But they've done so well. Um, and so, but for it makes sense for them to be like, though. okay, we're going to show off the PS4 Neo because Xbox is showing off a console. But well, guess yeah. what? We're doing better in the console war anyway, so if we're going to show off a console, guess what? We're probably more than likely actually going to sell it because we have games to support it. Mm -hmm. And I can believe that. See, the thing about the PS4 Neo and the Xbox Scorpio, and this is, it's not necessarily a weakness, but I worry that they're focusing too much on the hardware and not enough on games. Like, and this goes for both parties. Like, I think this goes for all parties. I mean, yes, but uh, so far Nintendo has demonstrated that they really do care about games more than they care about, like, how advanced the graphics can be. I mean, with the Switch coming out, you can fully say it is not nearly as powerful as, like, the Xbox Scorpio or the PS Neo are going to be. But at the same time, it's just as, if not more, enjoyable because the games on it are good. Right. So that's the only thing I want to see out of, like, both Nintendo, or not Nintendo, Microsoft and Sony, well, Nintendo as well, is just a good games catalog. Mm -hmm. I don't want the entire uh, E3 to basically be, like, New graphics, Chuck. And I think that Nintendo and Sony both get this. I mean, you look at all mm -hmm. the announcements that Nintendo's been doing, and I feel like Nintendo's keeping a lot of stuff in their back pocket, too. Well, yeah. And we'll get to Nintendo. We're going to let Sony have its turn. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so let's talk predictions here for Sony. We both agree that right now, Sony and Nintendo both actually understand that in order to sell your console, you have to have high-quality games. What Microsoft and Nintendo and Sony all recognize is that a console it, to be is this is the year for a console to be released starting yeah. with the switch then on the scorpio and the neo um so let's talk about this ps4 neo what sure you... uh we got some real great games we've heard about that are already coming out we got the new god of war which we'll see this year for sure um Everyone's i don't think we'll see it at E3, game. but i'm interested in the new valkyria revolution because mm. i'm the kind of guy who plays those yeah i saw games. that i saw that it looked good <laughs> And then, uh, like I said, everyone's favorite zombie apocalypse game, um, Last of Us. Yeah. I want to see a new Ratchet and Clank game, and uh, maybe they'll talk about the Sly Cooper movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, that's interesting. I'm just really hoping to see just, like, one really new, interesting new IP or some, like, left field announcement from, like, some uh, indie developer. Mm -hmm. I would be really interested in that. Now, I think they're going to talk about the Neo, but I think, like I, like I said earlier, Sony mm -hmm. feels like they're missing out, especially in Japan. And possibly even the new S, the US. The new S. The, the new, uh, right? I'm totally just going to say that. It's the, the new S. S. The new uh, S. The US. The US. Uh, I feel like Sony recognizes that they're missing out on the oh, handheld market. Huh? Yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I think they've given up. I think, uh, I think Sega tried, and Sega so was like, So why would they well, form a I can't do that. Because they have to. Look, Listen, nobody's here's... been able to break into the handheld market since the Game Boy released, and that was basically, you know, the first successful handheld, um, and we haven't had a successful handheld outside of Nintendo since then. See? Basically, they've top they they have on. You think grip the it. first PSP got beat by the original DS? Yes. Well, yes. The, Not the, just the, sales, the original DS yes. is the, one of the best selling consoles of all time. I think they're number two on the chart, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's a fantastic console with a great library, so, and I'm not saying the PSP is bad, but it definitely didn't sell as well in the states. It definitely didn't have the library, and they made a misstep with the PSP Go, uh, you know, all, all kinds of things like that. I mean, I understand. And to be fair, <coughs> the only like, 
I've, there's only been one real direct competitor in the handheld market to Nintendo, and that's Sony. But at the same time, I think that Sony kind of just recognizes where it diverges, because Nintendo is just doing what they do best. And I understand, like, oh, hey, they formed a patent, but hey, guess what? Microsoft formed mm -hmm. a patent for a handheld device, like, four years ago and it never saw the light of day mm -hmm. people form patents all the time because there's always like theory crafting of could we do this better than is currently being done by this company and mm -hmm. show them up but the question really becomes would they decide it's a good idea to toss money into a handheld mm -hmm. when they've already hit it so far out the park with the uh with the ps4 pro and the <laughs> neo and well all of that. <coughs> you okay there <coughs> I'm fine. Those allergies are bad. Ooh, yeah, they really are. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so for me, I could see them definitely going harder on the VR because the PS4 VR system is definitely good. Mm -hmm. It's just a good design. It's very, uh, I guess the word I'm looking for is ergonomic. Mm -hmm. But I don't see them releasing a handheld because that would just be so unnecessary at this right. point in time. So this is where I'm gonna. My opinion is gonna differ from all of you, and you guys okay. already know where I stand. So uh, I think Microsoft's jumping in the VR game because Sony's done so well with it. But I think Sony is gonna follow suit to Nintendo and create a handheld. However, there's going to be some exclus uh, exclusivity between exclusivity. the exclusivity. Yes. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> uh, there's gonna be some of that with the um, new PlayStation handheld. I think they do like the <coughs> hybrid concept, the ability to take your game on the go. Um, it's something that um, several other publishers have tried to do with their games. Like back, what was it with the PSP? They they made a game on the PS3 that you could actually take on the go on your PSP. Like you could, hmm. if you had the game on both consoles, you could take your save file with you. Yeah, yeah. And that originally started with, but that you know, Sony said, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's go ahead and we'll enable that functionality for you, and you could do that. And so yeah. I don't think that they're opposed to it. They tried to do it with the Vita. However, they were, like they were trying to do like yeah, the remote, like the Vita had even more remote, functionality on that. Yeah, part. they were yeah. supposed to have their remote console play. Uh, it was very exciting. Between it, still in the market. If you're on the same, I, if you were on the same, um, like Wi-Fi network, you could literally play your PS4 games across the house on your Vita. And so they already <laughs> kind of have been trying to compete with Nintendo on like the Wii U market in that mm. aspect, trying to. Uh, like say, hey, we can well, use some compete. of those features to right compete. Compete is too strong a word. As in, hey, <laughs> we're already kicking your butt, but we're gonna t steal some of your functionality away and give it to our users as the well. Sony the Sony thing is, they right. never used it though. Right, barely. But this is what I'm saying. Well, not enough games really had. Uh, Sony files for. their patent, mm -hmm. and obviously we have to we have to try to upsell people like to the new cool. console. We're gonna show off games that are gonna be exclusive to the PS4 and Neo. But I think something they're also going to do is incorporate a handheld device that lets you do those same functionality with the PS4 Neo exclusively. So the handheld do. will work not with the regular PS4, but only with the Neo, and you'll be able to take some of those games with you on the go. I feel like that's no longer going to work. Like, Maybe not. As a, as a concept, I, the idea of like uh, using a smaller like handheld system to connect to a bigger system is good. But I think Nintendo technically did the best thing they possibly could and just merged the both of them together mm -hmm. in a very seamless, easy-to-use But they're to still running way. the 3DS as well right they're now. They're still running so. the 3DS because, well... Because it's as, hugely successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like... And it, I feel like Sony's trying to jump into that. I feel like... Did you guys see that uh, Sony were... Like, Sony representatives mm -hmm. were actually at the Nintendo conferences like, well, course, in Japan. Well, of course. You always send conferences to compet Or you always send people to competitors conferences but well, yeah like sony is a pictures they're like, of course you know the uh the best form of flattery and then is they're imitation, right? right so that's why we got the so that's PS, what I'm saying. playstation move do they just do it to and... take away that's what i'm saying do they just go ahead and do it <coughs> to be like to go ahead and pull a sony yes that's exactly mm. what i'm saying okay so you're saying they're gonna make a handheld too no Okay, then why not? Because if you're saying okay. it's a bad idea, they've already tried. I'm not saying it's a bad. Failed. I'm not saying it's not a bad idea. I'm not saying I would. I'm not saying it's not a bad idea. But it's a bad idea. I'm, I'm, it is I'm, a bad well, idea. Okay, but I, but with to our record and to looking like looking back at history, do you not see Sony? being Sony and doing the thing that Sony does best. Okay, so you know... They already did that and it didn't work. Yeah. It's not like they're continuing to do the move. Yes, they are! Really. They did Breaking it with the that. move. They did it with the PS Vita. They have consistently <clears throat> copied Nintendo on 
They've even because got the Microsoft Nintendo with the good ideas. Nintendo. So Nintendo still has the waggle thing. They don't really have move support now. The PS4 See? camera is a complete ripoff of. No, wait, no. I mean, I guess they do, but it's with VR. They, it's something well, different. It's, it's such a competitive market. Now it's used when for the VR because <clears throat> they found functionality for it. And yes, that is a good salvage for an otherwise almost unuseful item. But it's not really, right. like, at that point, but they're not really copying I, I, Nintendo. Okay. I feel like we're getting stuck on this, but I'm just going to say, I think that at this point in time, it would be terrible for them to. Mm-hmm. And, like, maybe one or two years, I could see them doing this. But immediately, I think that they need to focus, they need to focus on three things. One, of course, is the games library. Two, of course, is uh, their VR, which mm-hmm. at the moment is considered to be i believe the best vr system available and technically for price and usability and lastly selling the ps4 neo those are the three things they need to focus on if they add a fourth thing and dilute the mixture more, the i think it's I just going like to be like bad i think it's going to be like how they sh- how nintendo showed off the wii u in 2013 was like oh hey here's a one minute trailer so show you're you all saying of- they're going to fail <laughs> no i think what they're going to do is they're going to show off a handheld in a quick one minute long trailer and say, hey, this is something we're working on to go with this PS4 Neo that we just got you hyped up about, and this is going to have cross connectivity in play, and you'll be able to play games I on don't the go. Think they're going to do that. Okay, but anyway, let's move. Speaking about VR, let's talk. Touch on VR. Unless you had anything else you want to add, Blake. I'm excited for Detroit Become Human. Yes. What? I'm glad you brought this up. Detroit Becoming Human. Have you not seen this that's game? A, no. That's a PlayStation exclusive. So it the guy is. who did he- Heavy Rain, Indigo Prophecy, uh, Beyond Two Souls, uh, making a new game. And this one looks like it'll actually be good. The first the first time they showed off the trailer back in uh, the 2015 E3 what am I saying? They all was a completely concept. different concept than what they showed in the 2016 E3. And Wait, the 2016 E3... <laughs> Was way better. Uh, I do remember that one. I'm, I uh, didn't know they showed it off in 2015. Oh, oh, it looks good. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm excited for that too. I'm looking it up right now. I think now. they're going to show it off and have a release date for it at the C3. In addition to a release date for God of War and Last of Us. Dad of War? I said God of War. Dad you mean Dad of War. War? Sure. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. That game with the uh, with the androids. Yes. Oh, yes, I remember that. Where yes. you're a detective yes. and you're an android. Yes, and, it's and like you cool. have like a million branching opportunities mm-hmm. to change the story. Yep. Yes, it's gonna I'm it's gonna be like psychopaths mixed with uh, Ghost in the Shell. Good God, American, I completely not forgot bad. about that. Right? Yeah, I'm excited. So for with that, God of War and Last of Us, and you have game. What was the other, they had another zombie game that they showed off last year, other than Last of Us, that looked really good. I don't, I don't even know. Oh, the one with the like billion zombies. Yeah, they're like really fast zombies too. Yeah, right. yeah, fast zombies. There's wow, also... I couldn't be more or less excited about that. Yeah, there's also the uh, oh god. I'm just saying they keep um, really trying to appeal to that Walking I mean, Dead crowd, don't they? It was pretty cool trailer, I gotta admit, but uh, um, it's a zombie game. And then let's zombies. let's touch on VR. So those are the games. Here, wait a minute. I have too one many more zombies. To Last of Us okay. Two is coming out. Death Stranded. Oh, Last of Us Two. Death coming Stranded. Out. Yeah, they hold the uh, key. Uh, Death uh, Stranded. Uh, right. The yeah. game we know nothing Kojima about. Kojima game. And we the won't know. very, very ambiguous Kojima game. <laughs> Do we learn something that, about it at this E3? Yes, no, we'll, we'll I'm learn hoping. about it. I'm really hoping. We will learn that we know lo- less about the game than we thought we did, <laughs> and then the game will release, and we still won't know anything about it. Why the heck is he we holding a baby? Game, and we still won't get it. <laughs> because it it's a Kojima title. title. It's going to be great. Oh, can you imagine if Kojima Productions did a uh, collaboration with Grasshopper Studios? And a Why? collaboration with... Uh, our, our favorite so, movie lover, we'll get the guys who made. Mm-hmm. <coughs> oh, okay. We'll get the guys who made Killer was, Seven to work was, with the guys who made Death thing. Stranding, and we'll get we'll we'll make the weirdest, most Japanese game uh, that could possibly mm-hmm. exist. That already belongs to Katamari Damacy, I think. No, maybe. Probably. I don't know. Killer Seven. You played Killer Seven, right? A little bit. You but play anyway, about no anyway. more heroes, right? We're getting we're getting off topic. So and then are. M Night Shyamalan you will come in Persona and Persona Five, right? Help yes. with that project. Okay, which anyway. is also an exclusive. It's All right, very good. Uh, VR. We have Ver. different opinions on what's going to happen with VR for Sony. Uh, do they build upon upon it? Because here's what we don't. Here's what we know. Sony has shut down half, if not more than half, of mm-hmm. their existing uh, VR studios. I think that they're going to double down. on it. And okay. I, it's like, I'm just playing devil's advocate here because it's such a 
good the VR system. Like a, a friend of ours got one, and I cannot wait to go and try it. But you actually haven't tried it yet. No, you just not yet. know what you heard. I have. Uh, gotcha. I have been told directly by like so many people who have used it, and the person who just got it that oh my god, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Like the one complaint I've had from like multiple people, or no, I'm sorry. <laughs> The one complaint that I've heard about <coughs> is that uh, the camera is very sensitive to light, so you have to like block out windows. Mm. That's, so that's name three thing. games for it. Uh, Eve Valkyrie, uh, that one with the girl who Eve, uh, you uh, tutor while she does her homework. That was you, what's Eve. the name of that game? What is the name of that game? I d- Blake. You know what I'm talking what about, right? Shush. It's that cool Japanese game where you're tutoring girl for her homework and I'll help. Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. That's a third party game. Yeah. So okay. You can almost not count that. But we'll count it. That shooter title. Uh, Batman. Right? Forgetting the title. Of. Same way. Wait, Batman. Batman so, VR. Why, why is Batman VR? Batman VR. Oh yeah, the Batman VR title. That's right. I okay. heard that game was pretty cool, but again, third party. <laughs> cool. So maybe VR is just a platform that Sony uses to make money on the third party machine. I think that's fine. Uh, I mean, Sony's I would not be really fine known with for that. the first party. Titles. But I don't really see them doing a whole lot of first party stuff with, with the well, what, what VR. Do they, what do they have first party wise like? When's the last wise. time they made a Killzone game? The beginning, the launch of the uh, we I mean, we were just talking about this earlier. No, they, made, they went on halfway. It, through it was the Vita and the launch of the PS4, right? Like, what uh, if they brought Killzone back this year, and in VR? Gorilla we games just talked about how the Gorilla move works games really would good. Either not be making it or wouldn't be involved. Mm-hmm. But like, the, the one thing I really just want to happen with the PS4 uh, it would be cool to VR, have shooter, but the shooters are very hard to do in VR for a lot yeah. of reasons. They they end up more like light gun simulators. Like yeah. there's one game that I would love to see just get ported to the PS4 that as of right now is not. But because it just it's a game that screams I want to be in VR. And I've talked about it before, I'm gonna talk <laughs> about it again. It's releasing this year. It's been Minecraft. In, no. Beta testing for, or not beta. It's been in development, adding consistently new and better stuff for so long now. Subnautica. Subnautica in VR oh, would God, immediately make... make it into a horror game. That would it's immediately terrifying. make people throw up all the time. It's it would be awful. so terrifying. Uh, like, to think about... Oh, my God. You move too fast. You No, not really. Okay. VR movement has to be pretty So you think specific. VR is going up? You think it's going to double down on it? Yes. It's like, opinion. Uh, as somebody who pays attention to tech in general... VR is a stepping stone for AR. It's not meant to stay around, and the real future of VR is going to be in mobile devices like the Samsung uh, VR. Uh, I don't. I, I think it's a really cool concept. I think it can be immersive. Uh, I don't know what the future is going to be as far as home PC games. We don't really have a magic bullet game for those yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody's really figured out the formula, and there's a lot of like quirks with humans that cause a lot of problems with VR. For example. The refresh rate has to be over 90 hertz for in order for a VR game to pe- keep people from feeling queasy. You can't move too quickly in VR unless you're like, uh, I mean, even if you're in a vehicle, it, sometimes it's hard. And you have to um, make sure you're strapped down to the ground <coughs> so you don't fall over inside of the supermarket. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you don't, um, AR is probably the future. VR is a stepping stone to that while we get the technology yep. ready uh, or mixed reality, whatever that is. Um, Mixed reality ultimately, is actually legitimately taking VR and applying it to real life to like well, enhance. I don't know. AR I don't know if we'll see a whole lot of VR games this year, this uh, year. Um, no, no, it's not. It's but, not a major thing. Um, oh, hi. Uh, it's cool. It's great for people who own it. It's incredibly cripplingly expensive. <laughs> we need people working on it. <clears throat> but it's not going to be something that's. <clears throat> I don't think. <clears throat> <Dang it. clears throat> Well, Maybe Blake's over there coughing up a lung. I will go ahead and, <coughs> and uh, give God my... Blake. I'll give my two cents real quick, if you don't mind. I do mind, but go ahead. I think yeah. they're not going to show anything. I think VR is pretty much going to be d- dying slowly. Um, they're not going to really talk about it too much. Um, I think what it's going to be is a platform for third-party gamers or third-party game-developing companies to put their games on. Uh, especially your first-person games. Um, I don't really see Sony saying, oh, yeah, look what we're doing with our VR system. I think I think we've already seen that. And with them shutting down studios, I don't see them probably doing much more first-party titles. I see them just, like I said, opening it up to third parties to develop for them. Um, 
that's pretty much what I've got. Anything else we want to touch on, Sony? Um, I a little bit disagree with what you're saying. I think we don't know. Um, third party's fine. Uh, it's not like Sony's known for their first party uh, support. I mean, yeah, they have a lot of exclusive, but it's not really first party that they're known for. Um, they have... Uh, basically, it's just we haven't found the, the right formula yet. If somebody manages to figure out VR uh, from a development standpoint, then it'll be popular. If they don't, well, then, you know, whatever. It'll be a console-only thing, or a uh, PC-only thing. Sure. Nate, do you have anything in the last 10 seconds here? Not really. All right. Okay, that is our Microsoft and Sony segment. Um, we're going to take a quick break because we're probably going to get interrupted by an ad right about now. And uh, once we are done, when we come back, we're going to talk EA, Bethesda, Ubisoft, and then lastly, uh, we're going to talk about Nintendo. Those first three, EA, Bethesda, and uh, Ubisoft, will probably take like 10 minutes, and we'll be done. There's not a whole lot to say there, but we're excited oh, about is it. is there not? Are you sure? I, I don't know. Is there? Probably. Stay tuned to find out more. All right. We are back, and believe it or not, guys, in that last 30 seconds of that advertisement that you guys just watched, we all went to dinner at a restaurant, had pizza, had drinks, good old time, went to the dry cleaners, came back, and now we're here. So welcome! I don't even know why you have one of those suits. It's, I mean, what, what kind of I things mean, are you getting into? I, I don't really want to discuss this on the air. Let's but talk about something else! I saw a glimpse of it, and I just... Nope, 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 like, we're done. Nope. Before she put hey, so <laughs> we're talking about E3. Uh, we just covered the M Microsoft and Sony portion of that. And um, now we're going to listen to Jaden talk about Star Wars for 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, actually, no, we'll touch into some other things too. Uh, EA, Bethesda, Ubisoft, anyone have anything they want to add on any of these? Anything you're excited about? I'm excited for Elder Scrolls VI uh, Black Marsh. Okay. Yeah, nice. <laughs> That's not announced. You don't think nope. it will be. Well, it might be announced this year. Uh, probably will be announced next year. Uh, given to release added. next year or be announced next year? Oh, they're not going to release it next year. Maybe an announcement. Okay. Not even an announcement this year, huh? <laughs> no. You think it's just going to be Elder Scrolls Online focused? No, uh, mm. Bethesda is big enough that they have other properties. Um, the biggest one I, I expect to see. Maybe a follow up to Doom because that did really well. This quick? I mean, Doom's only been out a year and a half. Well, yeah, Doom. But right before Doom, what came out? Wolfenstein. That was really good. Oh, I forgot about Wolfenstein. Yeah, so, I bet you they do a Wolfenstein <laughs> release. Yeah, id Software has been doing it basically back to back. Oh, yeah, they have the new uh, Pew Pew Shooty. Uh, oh yeah, the Pew Pew Shooty. Yeah, I like that game. <coughs> That's a good pew, one. Pew, 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 yeah, the the Quake game. Quake Heroes. Yes, I forgot. they That is in production. That's already been announced. Mm. So we will probably see some gameplay of sort on the new Quake, mm -hmm. which will be good. And a lot of what it takes in Quake is the the new uh, PvP Doom stuff. They just basically turn that into Quake. Mm. I mean, they're basically the same. I don't know if you guys played played Doom at all, but it was it was okay. It was okay. Uh, not my favorite shooter, but it definitely was was very fun. And I heard it was eleven the whole way through. It was great. Um, <laughs> I'll have to play it. Find you, out. You should. As a level creator, it's something I'd like. Yeah. Now, um, Nate, uh, how how are you feeling, man? I'm, what are I am looking at the crispiest of doggo memes. He's not even in this conversation. Okay, I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm being honest. Unless they decide to release either a. <laughs> And uh, like a new Fallout a or a new open world that is not related to Elder Scrolls Online, I just don't care. Okay. I have a prediction. Okay, we have a prediction from Blake, everyone. This is probably very, very important. So listen in. All right, guys. Look, this isn't about Bethesda. This is about a different studio that's probably gonna have press conference this year. So listen, here's what's gonna happen. All right. All right. Listen. Square Enix is going to announce. I'm waiting. Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh my god, please tell me. Please give me more. He's not going to have a release date. No! Why? Why would you tease like that? Just why? Oh, 
Oh, it's just what they do. Uh, I know that they're, they're probably going to talk about the Final Fantasy VII thing. Last we heard, it wasn't even in development when they showed that trailer last year. Maybe it is now. Maybe right. they'll have something Ra- worth Raise showing. your hand if you're really excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. Raise your hand if you think that's not being announced to release this year. All right, I just want to let you know, out of the three people in here, six hands just went up. Actually, five did because one hand was sipping tea in the corner Stay with stiff. a pinky up like a boss. So Was my pinky up? It was in our hearts. Huh. It was. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're all pretty discouraged because we feel like we should have had Kingdom Hearts last year. Or maybe the year before that. Um, but there is some good news about Square Enix. Oh, there's my hype watch list. You want to know the uh, you want to know the good news about Square Enix? What's that? There is a rumor that Final Fantasy fourteen is going to, or I don't even think it's a rumor. I think Final Fantasy fourteen has been confirmed for Xbox, right? That's as well as PlayStation. It's going to be on both consoles. And there's yeah. a rumor Kingdom Hearts three will be as well. <clears throat> oh yeah, uh, but the question wait, is: you mean the Kingdom Hearts Seven, or not Kingdom Hearts? God, yeah, Kingdom Hearts Seven, uh, Final Fantasy. 7. This is a, Final uh, Fantasy Seven. I said Kingdom Hearts Seven. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Yes, <laughs> Final Fantasy Fifteen. Well, there's seven. Of my them bad. Now. Yeah. Fo- so Final Fantasy uh, Seven. Final that... Fantasy Seven Seven on uh, Xbox and PlayStation. Uh, I would say yes, because the last uh, the last one did that. So. Now the question is, rumors are, if they do it with Final Fantasy VII, the remake, they're also going to do Kingdom Hearts three in the same nature. I don't know about that. Uh, we haven't heard about... Uh, oh, sorry, this has nothing to do with the uh, moving topics again. Sorry. Um, no! So, <laughs> let's finish this question, wait, and then we'll do that. Right. There would be anything. Final like Fantasy sorry, VII. I was looking at my list of Final games Fantasy I was VII, for. Going to PS4 and Xbox One. Kingdom Hearts 3, PS4, Xbox One. Yes? On both consoles? You mean... <laughs> there is a follow-up question to this, so... Okay. No. Uh, Just PS4? Kingdom Hearts will only be on PS4. All right. Because all... I think there's a better chance of it being on PS4 and Switch than Okay, on, there we go. Uh, than so it is on Xbox. They didn't the, release 2.8 for... With the ever-increasing relationship currently running with Nintendo, I feel like... Square Enix is about to throw a major IP that would run very well on the Nintendo Switch. And no, we're not talking about that side-scroll RPG game with the weird name, Project Octopath. That was just just weird. That's just No, we're not talking about that. Um, so that's pretty much those discussions. We still have to cover EA, but one more thing from Blake, I guess you wanted to... Yeah. Another topic. Uh, on the hype train. Ubisoft. Yes. Unnamed Assassin's Creed game. We. Uh, this is rumored an, to Assassin's be Origins. Th- yeah, it's uh, supposed to be an Assassin's Creed game coming out this year. Uh, we don't know anything about it yet, so that's going to be at E3. I did hear it was an origin story. That's what I'm hearing. Here's the thing: we already have an origin story for the Assassins. Or well, it depends. We already know how everything it. started. Uh, the Masaya. Um, well, that's Assassin's Creed 1. Assassin's but... Creed 1 was the origin story. But, it's... rumors are there's more to the story prior to that. They're, they're really... I don't know what else they're covering, but I'm just going on... Uh, they already set... You, know what, said, I, you know what I want to see? This is where the story starts. I don't know how they were going to go further back than that. You know what, you know what I want to see? The lore they have so far. I feel like the, <laughs> they did this kind of with the Industrial Revolution. Uh, you know, the newest... Mm. The newest genre or newest title within the Assassin's Creed franchise. Um, I mean, so they did Pirates and then they did the Industrial Revolution, mm-hmm. both of which had guns and weaponized, like, we- weaponized um, long range weapons uh, mm-hmm. or, like, guns uh, or they had rifles, basically, and pistols. Nothing too advanced. Do we see them jump into the Civil War or into the American side of things? They did that. With Assassin's Creed 3, I felt like it was very good. Um, but do we see them do that with the Civil War or, let's say, even a more prevalent war like World War One, World War Two, where they incorporate some of those values where... I think it's on record that they don't want to go that far forward. Uh, mm-hmm. We could probably see... I would be interested to see... I love... Like, I'll be honest, the modern-day missions are, are really cool. 
And you know I would cool? love to see them go all the way up to modern day and then make a future. You know what would be cool? Uh, Imperial Germany, World War, pre-World War One, just right before it. You know, the oh, events yeah. had already kicked into place, mm-hmm. but it were in the months leading up to World War One. You know what would be also really cool? Where you play a Jewish assassin <coughs> trying to rescue your family in the Holocaust. Uh, yeah, I guess Sorry. so. It's going against Nazi Germany. Um, I think I think that would really help display um, an, an emotional connection, and would really drive a good storyline. I get line. where you're going. I don't know that they're willing. Uh, that they I don't think they're willing to think touch on it would. because of the topic. However, I think from a story perspective, it would drive a very emotional connection and good good story campaign. Yeah, but if they screw that up, they're probably dead. Mm, they would have to be very true to the to what is in history and really give a lot of. Uh, All right. Memoriam to <clears throat> to those lost in World War Two and in the Holocaust. All right, but wrapping it up. Um, so there's a couple of uh, unreleased Ubisoft games that we'll probably hear about. Uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, we'll definitely hear about. Okay. Um, the Fractured But Whole didn't come out yet. Yep, it so got delayed. We might hear again. a little more about that and. Um, For next year. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, it was supposed we'll to come get, out last holiday. Oh, what's what's it called? The the new Rabbids RPG with Mario. Oh, let's I talk about this. Know. I think it is no. not real. I think it is fake. We've, I heard, heard, we've heard more about it, uh, so I don't think it's we've fake heard, anymore. We've heard rumors, yes, but I think it's fake. I think everyone saw the Rabbids from the... Uh, the new Super Mario game coming out this holiday... Because they did bring back some of the Super Mario 64 rabbits mm. as bad guys. Oh, well, I think maybe. People, I think people got that confused with the rabbits from Movisoft because they heard about the relationship and working connection they there. They are kind of similar. That's they true. bear. They are similar, but um, I don't know. I think I do think that Ubisoft does want to reach more of their uh, casual mm. players on the Switch, um, and so we'll, we'll we'll see what they do. Do we think Assassin's Creed is going to the Switch? Uh, no, maybe. I mean, you think about it, the only Assassin's Creed that hasn't gone on the Switch is their latest one. They did, or, and Black Flag, I guess. Black Flag didn't either. Black Flag really? wasn't on it. Wait, well, no, was... Black Flag was on the Wii U, wasn't it? I uh, believe. no, Assassin's Creed 3 was. Okay. Yeah, that's what it I was. thought they re-released Black oh, Flag. Maybe they did do Black Flag on there, hold I just on, can't remember. On. I'm on my phone waiting for us to move into interesting conversations. Okay, so... <laughs> I guess it's not okay. that important anyway. Um, uh, last thing uh, I want to touch on. One quick. more prediction for Ubisoft. Okay. Uh, Aisha Tyler will say something very cringy and it will make a meme. Okay. She I will, uh, will agree with that. There will be... Uh, she will ask somebody to make a meme uh, and the internet will make a meme of her making a meme. Nice. Uh, Only uh, Assassin's Creed 3 will uh, Can we talk about Star Wars now? Please, please, please. Can we talk about Star Wars now? I mean, if you want. Can you oh my god. Yes. Yes, yes you Okay, can. guys. I'm not going to talk too long about this because I know these guys aren't as excited about it as I am. But, oh my god, this could be the Star Wars game that we're waiting for. But I don't think they're just going to show Star Wars Battlefront (coughs) 2. I think they're going to show the other new action RPG Star Wars game that Amy Henning (coughs) and the LucasArts, former LucasArts development team, have been working on. Which is a new (sighs) Uncharted-esque game. That they took all the 13, 13 employees and basically put them, a lot of them on this project. Not all of them, but a lot of them. See, that's pretty exciting. And I forgot that, about that. That looked really good last mm-hmm. year when they showed it at E3. But keep in mind, this is EA Play. It's mm-hmm. a little different. They're going to show a lot of multiplayer features. Last year, they had a huge deal with um, Battlefield 1. They showed like live action, like a bunch of people live streaming it. I can't wait to see that for the new uh, Battlefront because it's got multiple factions. I can't wait to learn more about the story. I feel like they're going to show us more of the campaign, and now that it has a full-fledged campaign in Battlefront 2, it's something worth looking into. The first Battlefront was super disappointing because all the content was in the paid DLC, and now that they've announced that there is not going to be a paid season pass and that it will all content will, will release for free um, with the purchase of the game, that is incredible to me. And I'm very excited to see that approach because I feel like a lot of fans and players were hurt by that the last go around. Um, so we are excited for that. Uh, we won't touch any more into that. Uh, any final thoughts? Oh, sports games. Uh, we're going to have sports games. 
They're going to show a lot of sports games. Yeah, sports. Sports games. Sports. Go sports ball. Okay. If we actually, don't have a game with actually, the Skywiper in it in the next 10 um, years, I will raise. Actually, I care. I, I care. Don't give. I, I think eggs. Ultimate Team is going to have some new features on Madden, and I think it's also going to be Madden's going to be coming to the Switch. It hasn't been formally announced. They have announced FIFA, but that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously, everything else is going to be same-o, same-o. So we will wait and see, but that is all we have to touch on EA, oh, well, Bethesda, and Ubisoft, unless you guys have anything last minute to add. Sports games are terrible. If Disney doesn't manage to get a new game that has a Star Viper in it in the next 10 years, I swear to God, I will find a way to raise Buena Vista Lake. I will set it on fire. I will find a way to make it happen. Let's not get okay. sued, all right? Let's not get sued. Anyway, that's everything important. All right. Cool. Nice. <laughs> now we can talk about something <coughs> that we all love to talk about. Hey, let's talk about Nintendo. Let's talk about our favorite little plumber. We're going to see Mario Odyssey. It's happening. Yeah. Um, you and mean it's happening. And it's going to be playable. Eh? They said it's going to be playable no. at E3. Eh? Yep. Eh? Eh? All right, it's going to be playable at E3. All right, fine. And it's also... Going to be probably something we get to play at uh, at the GameStop Expo mm. in Vegas. So if you guys want to go play Mario, go to the GameStop Expo. That's where we're going to be. Um, or at least I will be. Hopefully you guys can make it. Um, let's talk about some other Nintendo predictions. Um, right. We will start with Nate, the quiet one. Because I feel like we need to get him back engaged in this conversation. I'm engaged. I'm just sitting here looking at some really me too. memes. Who's the lo- lucky girl? Or boy, I don't judge. Uh, Back to the topic of what's what are you excited about? What what do we see? Okay, fine. Do you, I mean, obviously they're going to talk a lot about ARMS on um, Thursday because yep. it comes out on Friday and they're showing off their tournament. Uh, Wednesday, they're doing probably going to do a lot of 3DS titles and indie titles uh, because that's yeah. what they pretty much do with the treehouse. Um, and they may give a couple of sneak peeks of Mario, but what are we gonna see in the actual expo? What are we What are we actually gonna see during the presentation? Two things. One the spotlight, as they call it. I'm gonna steal Blake's thing and agree. No, with them. I need to talk about it. No, it's, I really want a Monster Hunter game on the Switch. Oh well, that's not what I'm I was joking, gonna say. I'm joking. They need to port Double Cross to the states. If they don't, I'm going to be so upset. Because then I have to learn to read Japanese, and it's going to be fun either way, but still. Probably be good to do that, though. Uh, but at any rate, well, yeah, I need to learn another language anyway. I need Yo to parlo un po di italiano. Same generations by itself just isn't, it isn't enough. It's high rank only. We need G rank. Yeah. I, it's an unfulfilled. I know it's supposed to be a spinoff, but I need that fulfillment. Coming from a non-Monster uh, Hunter player, um, why is it so essential that you guys get that, that game here and not something new? Or different. Well, first, it'll show that, that uh, Capcom is really trying to make an effort to sell to the state side, right? Mm-hmm. Second, um, has G rank? Has G rank? I don't even know what that means. Uh, okay, so woo-hoo! basically, <coughs> in every Monster Hunter game, there are three ranks there's normal rank, there's high rank, and G rank. Basically, uh, the transition from normal to high is basically like going from easy to hard mode. G, G rank has so many interesting additions to it it has Mm -hmm. insanely difficult monsters it has higher challenges it has more interesting variants and it has the most powerful elder dragons that are in the game and it's just very needed because even as it stands monster hunter generations has not to mention the armors have more than three skills yeah the uh, generations has a lot of really cool monsters and they've made a cool additions and brought back really cool things but it's just like it's in Japan. I need it here, you know. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So hey, <clears throat> while we're on Japanese import games, Dragon Quest. Do we see an English version of Dragon Quest? You mean the fact that without the you mean the, besides the, the fact that they already announced it? The wobble. No, they, they announced it. they announced yeah. Dragon Quest Heroes. I'm talking about no Dragon, Dragon Quest. Quest uh, yeah, yeah, it's been announced for the Switch already. When? Uh, a while ago. No, like, when is it that. coming to the States is what I'm saying. Do they yeah. not have a... I'm saying, no, are we going to see a release coming. date? I, I don't know if we'll see a release date, but they've already said that it's coming. And okay. Considering it's just a transition, or a, not translation. Well, technically, it's a transition and a translation, but still. But anyway, my second out of my three topics, uh, I want a Metroid game. 
For the love of oh, God, I please. want a Metroid game. Now the question Give is... Give me a Metroid game. I don't care if you just decide, hey, we're going to port the Metroid Prime trilogy for the third time. I'll buy it for the Switch because taking that on the road is like amazing an idea. Here, here's what I want. <clears throat> I want a new innovative Prime that has multiplayer features Dragon that can compete sure that can compete with the other I mean cuz Splatoon is a great game, don't get me wrong. Splatoon is fun, but can it compete with the other major first yes, party absolutely. shooters? Yes. Yes, very much so. It can compete with Halo. It can yes. compete with Call of Duty. Yes, it's, it's not a Halo game it, this year. Um, okay, no, it's not no, like a PG sport. S- Splatoon is. It's more casual, and maybe it has is it more that. casual? Is you it really? Say that it feels casual, but it really has a lot more depth than it. Lo- but we also it doesn't I, have the random elements that some other games okay. have. It's, it's but I will say in depth, that okay, okay. if they added in a more realistic sci-fi shooter that could <coughs> compete or draw in that hardcore crowd, because let's face it, Call of Duty and Battlefield. They're not coming to the Switch anytime soon. No. They have they have before in the past, and they haven't done very well. So what I'm implying, we're not trying to get into the Splatoon conversation here. Mm-hmm. Splatoon's already been announced. Mm-hmm. Splatoon is already happening. It's awesome. The question is, would it be beneficial for them to make a very good Metroid game, but also really have a good multiplayer Met- focus into Metroid's it. Metroid's not like, really a shooter, Kind of though, like right? what they did with Metroid Prime Hunters. Like, it's it's a puzzle shooter. Like, what are you talking about? It it's is all totally shooter. a shooter. That's the whole thing is a shooter. Yeah. Well, no, uh, Metroid Prime Hunters was a shooter, but the other games are puzzle shooters. Not really. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to solve puzzles, and you're going You're thinking through... of 2D, yeah, maybe 2D Metroids. No, I'm thinking Prime. I would, I would not Prime, Prime call... has some puzzles to it, but it's mostly a shooter. Like Basically, about exploration and that's like puzzle saying puzzle. Halo is a puzzle game because you go to an objective and you push a button. No, you don't. Like, okay, Blake, here's. I understand what you're trying like to say. Like the morph ball, and you have to do things with ice and stuff like that. That's you just level out how progression. The thing, do what? It's just level progression. Yeah, that's puzzle solving. No, it's not. Either that way. That is getting a power up and gaining access to something through that power. All oh, I'm trying to say is that. Hunters was very multiplayer focused, and it, was, it actually worked out very well. But the only thing about it was it was on the DS. You had to use the mm-hmm. stylus to be able to turn and stuff. What if we took that concept, put it into a higher quality, higher graphic game, added in online multiplayer, had a release for this year? And this is another – the reason I said this year. Did you guys hear that E3 for Nintendo? This almost made me a little sad, but then it gave me a little hope as well. Mm-hmm. It made me think that Nintendo has more in their back pocket, but they strictly said – that the spotlight is only to right. talk about stuff this you know release this year. You know what? You're right. I think that that's Let a me good make idea, a prediction actually. right now. For real, we're talking about shooters. We're talking about Nintendo. I got something. All right, this is going to bring some fans back, some hardcore shooting action. All right, ready? Here's what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to have uh, what? Well, we're going to have Reggie walk on stage this year. He's going to okay. walk on stage. His lights are going to light up He's in joking. the background. You'll see a triangle. And the light will shine up on it. Conduit 2. Blake, get it out. <laughs> they actually released Conduit 2 already. <laughs> Wait, there was a Conduit sequel, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. Oh, that's right. I'm oh sorry, God. I forgot. It had to be Conduit 3. That's right. Conduit was, and, uh, and then Conduit 2 was with the uh, okay, Motion Plus. Okay, But uh, at any rate, I actually Conduit about 3. Conduit. They're going to reboot Conduit. Oh, God. And it's going to be good this I mean, time. Don't get me wrong. Conduit, it's going to be a competitive Conduit shooter. Conduit was a fun IP. Mm-hmm. It was a good concept. But it was released in the wrong generation. It was released on the Wii. If that game would have came to Wii U, great. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, back to Metroid. But Red anyway, Steel Three. They've already announced that their Platinum Games. Wait, was it Platinum Games? No, 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 no. The Not rumor Platinum. is that uh, pla- that uh, Platinum or Retro Studios. Retro, is on Retro. It. That's Retro what hasn't announced what they're working on. There's a rumor that Re- that Retro is working on a first uh, first party IP for Nintendo. And Retro are the people responsible for making And Metroid they've also Prime. been tweeting pictures of Prime Rib. Yep. And, like, that was <laughs> a mean, while ago. But I'm just, just they, thinking, like, oh, just give it back to the, the question people is, who if made they, it amazing. If they announce it, that means it has to come out this year. You're right. Which I would be It'll be Metroid Prime with. Federation Force 2. Okay, I'm going to kill you. 
Get out. I'm going to say Get out. out. Just go. <coughs> no, no, but like, that, that was is, a Metroid Prime title. That is the one thing that if Nintendo actually announces a sequel to Federation <coughs> Force before they <coughs> announce an actual Metroid title, I might legitimately get angry. Now, I know they like, said seriously. Spotlight 2017. We're going to see a lot of Mario, probably. Like, we're probably going to see a lot I'm of Mario Odyssey. It's going to be Mario Odyssey. They're probably going to reveal some kind of new thing with It's Splatoon. only going to be I like 30 know. to 45 minutes at most. I don't think they're going to take um, a full hour. They should. Hey, I have a question. Uh, with the success of that um, that futuristic light racer on the uh, Switch right now, uh, do you think that they have a shot at releasing another so if, F-Zero game? Uh, maybe. Maybe, actually. but not this year. It'll be a couple years down the road. They want to let Fast RMX's vibe kind of go on for a little bit. Okay. Plus two, Fast RMX was great for one reason. One, yeah, it's it's well, a really it's the only sol- one. It's a really solid indie game. It's the, it's only, the only one, one on the market. And then three, it was the only racing game at launch, and now Mario Kart's out. No one is playing any other racing game right now other than Mario Kart. And they're gonna keep playing Mario Kart. And they're gonna keep playing Mario Kart. But so that's the only side is like, okay, if we do this, we have to do it to bring back the hardcore racing fans. But then even then, that's more of a pod racing mm. style game. It's not a well, yeah. It's it's a futuristic speed racy. Uh, F Zero style. So I don't know if F Zero wipeout style game. Um, I have my theory about F Zero. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, but anyway, I actually just remembered a theory that I had about what Nintendo is going to do. But that I'll save that one for my last one. My okay. third one is actually like, ironically, is exactly what Jaden was saying: is that if Metroid is not going to be a first party IP shooter, they're going to have some kind of other online thing, like because they're real. They're going to release. Oh god, I hit my tongue. They're gonna release uh, Splatoon. Then, like three weeks after that, they're going to have their uh, internet service thing come in. It, yeah, it starts in September officially yeah. is when they start paying. And this is another thing they're gonna talk on. Yep. They're gonna talk about their virtual console. They're gonna talk about their online. Yeah. Their new online service. That's but, uh, guaranteed. That's no, it has to happen. But yeah. my prediction that would basically just be some kind of other online shooter, or some kind of cooperative thing or anything that has online functionality no. they have to present something for that reggie fils i know you were probably not listening but if you are if you want to dominate e3 Why reggie specifically okay anyone at nintendo anyone with a voice bill trinan i mean iwata I no who whoever is. listen to me listen you want to dominate e3 do these five things. Metroid this year. Virtual console, including GameCube. And launch that day of with oh, yeah, like to see Melee, uh, Double Dash. Thousand Year Door. Oof, I don't know about Thousand that. Year Door. Yeah, that for sure. And Luigi's Mansion. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, announce follow-up games for Smash Brothers. Or at least announce a Smash 4 port to the Wii U. To, or to the uh, Switch. From the Wii U. With more characters. Add in a wireless GameCube controller or be able to have the dock use the adapter. Oh, I don't think Smash would come out this Hold year. Hold on. No. No, no, no. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Smash 4 port, just announce it. But you said that they're well, only going to announce well, things Well, true. But if right. it's a port, Smash 4 could easily come this year because all you have to do is add in characters to start with oh, on top of what you already have. And then they can add more free DLC and stuff later. And all they have to do is add all the 3DS stuff in high definition Mm -hmm. and all of the Wii U stuff and put it into one package. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Add in some additional characters. Ice Climbers, bring back those characters and a few new ones. Oh, yeah, maybe they could. Add in some Square Enix characters. Boom. Done. Um, And last. And then the last thing that you guys need to do, okay, is just make sure that when when it comes to talking about this new online feature... Mm -hmm. If we're paying for it, make make sure there's a game out there that's going to make us want it. You've released Mario Kart, great. There's not really any communication feature. There's not anything. I know you guys are going to show off your app. Okay, we get it. It's cool. But make sure there's a game that's worth it that has good communication features or needs good communication features, whether that be Prime or another game. Just make it to where it will bring the community together because it's one thing that they've lacked. Like right now. Oh, like this- Monster Hunter. I'm like okay, Monster Hunter would be a good one. Um, but there's so many other IPs oh, that we can uh, touch on that they haven't jumped into we yet. We haven't touched on Pokemon yet. 
That's right. For that okay. Multiplayer. Pokemon that, would be perfect. Before that, my last. Do Pokemon. Points. That's five. There we go. Yeah. My last point. We're getting a Pokemon this year announcement. I'm sure. But this is something that I have been thinking about recently, and I think it would be horribly mistimed. But for some reason, I can't get it out of my head that it could possibly happen. Mm -hmm. VR headset mount. Uh. See, that's that's mm. what I'm thinking. All right. But here's the thing. If there is any console. That was solely built for being capable to handle VR. President of of Nintendo did announce that VR is something they've looked into, yeah. and they want to try to fix battery life and a couple other things before they actually would release it. See, I don't but, think it's going to happen this year, but it seems so inevitable but because if they, the Joy Cons are perfect as oh, motion perfect. controllers, and the head and the the Wii U or not Wii U, God, the Switch's the screen, 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 screen is. perfect perfect size for a headset i mean it probably a yeah, little the big bit problem long. i've had with vr but when i've used it is that the the screens are just not big enough and now think about like this you're looking at a little box you, you want to blow people away mm -hmm. hey guys we're announcing metroid oh hey VR. guys guess what it's also going to be able to be played in vr see, see that now that'd be pretty cool up. but also be awesome. uh, you couldn't walk too fast so no 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 no, no. no, 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 no. Would, no maybe. you would probably you never really sprint truly in uh you would i don't think you never really release. sprint inside of uh Metroid anyway, you kind of have like a light jog well, run, but yeah. it's not like, nothing I too think, fast. Well, here's I don't the thing: think surprisingly, that you would move forward physically with that, I think you would still indicate it with the controllers and just like well, you yes. know, use that. That's what I mean. Because it, it uh, that's let, what we're let talking me explain. About. See, we're here's just saying the you problem. can't move too fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if you play the character, a, so it doesn't throw off their depth. If you play a VR whatever. game where you move around from a human perspective, uh, it's very difficult because you have to move at a normal walk speed. Um, no game moves at a normal walk speed. They try it with Minecraft; it makes you feel sick because you move way too fast. Mm -hmm. If you change it to a normal walk speed, well, you're walking normally. You know, uh, at the same speed a human Ooh, does about one meter, which is like three seconds. So it's like Three seconds cross one block. You're talking very, very slow walking, and it's not really uh, uh, usable for video games now. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that that would be cool. <coughs> but again, if you're going to show off the online features, if you do something as crazy or in depth as let's say they show off a VR peripheral, ooh, then make mm -hmm. sure that you have the games and you're there, yeah. ready with ammunition to back it up. Put the you games know what first. would be a oh, good uh, good way to introduce uh, VR for the Switch? Mm -hmm. What? Bring back Pilot Wings. Pilot Wings would be cool. Yeah, that'd, that'd be would great. Be interesting, actually. And they'd probably want to do it as like a pack-in. Or, or maybe, or maybe Star Fox, uh, um, if they feel like trying speaking that Speaking of again. games with a pack-in, remember the 3DS game Kid Icarus? <coughs> Who doesn't want to see a new remake of Kid Icarus? See, I need, I've been meaning to play that game. It looks so fun. It's it fun, interesting. but... It was made for the 3DS when it didn't have the other stick on it. There were a couple of... Like, they had to add that attachment, remember? Mm -hmm. So, I feel like if they were to bring it back... And this is not going to happen this year in E3. This is just conversation. Uh, I mean, the Switch would be a perfect platform to revive that genre. Um, and back to F-Zero. This is my thing on the F-Zero. You want to make F-Zero awesome? Go. Make it a third-person action game like Uncharted, where you're playing as the uh. bounty hunter. Where you're playing as the bounty hunter, Captain Falcon... And you're doing the things that he did outside of racing and add in racing elements to it, like where there is racing online multiplayer and there's also like a Grand Prix mode outside of just the story. I think mm -hmm. that'd be cool. And you can incorporate some races into the story that plays out with the But Gene, plot. we've talked about um, this. I, uh, we what? haven't talked about it on the podcast, though, and that's why I brought it's it up. It's true. We've talked about this, though, outside. All right, look. What game? This uh, F-Zero is a racing title. It's a racing game. If they made a game that was just Captain Falcon running around, that's fine. It won't be a racing game. I know. But if you make it a racing game and you also want them to play outside, that's bad. Because let's go down the list. Star all right? Fox Ventures. I know. Star Fox Ventures. Star, Star Fox, Fox, Star Fox Star Assault. Ventures. The worst part of Star Fox Assault was being out of the vehicle. What was the worst part of uh, Battlefield? Or Sorry, not that. Uh, what was the worst part of Rogue Squadron 2 and 3? Okay. I Being get it. Out of the but vehicle. you know what? You know what game? Also, he just you guys <coughs> just reminded me of is an IP that Nintendo hasn't touched in a while. Pourquoi? Battlegrounds. Uh, uh Battlegrounds. Wasn't that or the not one Battlegrounds? On uh, GameCube. Yes. Wait, where you run around yes. with vehicles. Yes. Yeah, I've been meaning to go back and try that again. Player um, no, that one's a very unique game. Battlegrounds. Oh, no, no, not Battlegrounds. Uh, shit. Uh, shit. Battle. It's a game where you can. Uh, it's it's like an RTS except uh, you can control. Oh, well, no one you don't have a you is. don't have an overview. Battalion Wars. Battalion Wars. That's Sorry, the one. you are um, not looking over the map. You are 
looking at it from a unit's perspective and you have direct control over I would love to see EA unit. come forward you and be switch like switch between units. Uh, hey guys, we're partnering really with Nintendo again and we're bringing Rogue Squadron 4. <coughs> that would be amazing. Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. uh Just so Battalion Wars, uh really interesting game. I have to go back to play it again at some point so that I can really decide. That's an IP that hasn't been touched. But mm. let's talk about this some other time. Back to E3 predictions. I'm sorry to take us off course. A, I don't mind having it come that's back. That's all of mine. Oh, like, with multiplayer functionality, it could be like uh, it could be like Warhawk, but for the the Switch. Oh my God, drop it, Blake. No, I will we'll never talk, drop hey, Warhawk. Drop hey, it. we will talk about that next podcast. Blake, but you said you had this something is E3. You to talk about. We're talking about Nintendo what? predictions. We, we only have a couple more minutes left. You said you wanted to talk about Pokemon. We want to talk Pokemon. What are there some other some some other predictions you have too? But I'd like to hear your opinion on Pokemon. Pokemon's good. Wow, is that really your whole? Do you opinion? think it's? I, I don't remember Do you think it's truly really Pokemon. Pokemon Stars? Do you think it's something completely new, completely different? Oh yeah, a good or point. What? Mm. They said that the 3DS is going to be alive for a while. I don't think the Pokemon team is willing to switch directly off of it. I think we're probably going to see, rather than uh, a next generation, we're going to see a re-release of. Diamond and Pearl because the evidence seems stacked in, in its favor. On the 3DS? Well, yeah. No, ma- no. The main thing is that we're missing a lot of Pokemon from uh, the the uh, Diamond and Pearl uh, mm-hmm. era. And, um, well, that means that they're probably going to release a game that has Pokemon from the Diamond and Pearl era. Mm-hmm. Meaning we're probably going to remake. It'll be for the 3DS. It won't be for the Switch. I don't think so we're going to get say. stars. I don't think that's a real thing. I think it does, yeah. but I think they're going to incorporate some, like, on-the-go elements to it. Yeah. Uh, the only problem is, is there's no like active GPS inside of the Switch, and so when you're not connected online, it, I don't know if it would work very well. Um, Wait. Uh, there's no Street Pass. That's what? right. Oh yeah, that. If there was a GPS functionality, then the rumors of the Pokemon Stars being like a hybrid with Go would make more sense. Cause well, that, that's I a don't silly think rumor. That well, was it? Sense. That wouldn't exist at all. But here's here's the thing we haven't thought about, guys. We haven't seen the connectivity between the phone and the Switch yet. And they did say that all the online functionality is going to run, like, at least through the online app. Well, which, if your phone is connected to data, <coughs> just hear me out. If your phone is connected to data, I'm not talking about the hotspot thing, but if your phone is connected to data and it has GPS, I think and it can link <coughs> via Bluetooth to your Nintendo Switch, mm-hmm. that's, like, the interface that they use to communicate between the online app. I don't know if it'll be Then that. maybe... Oh, they could totally have a mobile app for that. Remember those... That's what they said. That's what they, they said though. they're going to do for all communications See, yeah. um, I think on that the that's Switch. A hey, what generation idea. did those Tamagotchis come out for the, the oh, Pokemon game? A long time game? ago. Rem- th- those were for the remake of uh, Gold and Silver, right? Right? Which happened during what? Generation oh, the Tom- 4? Oh, the Pokewalkers? Right? right? Gen so what if we get a virtual Pokewalker for the the, the no, phone? No, that was a remake of Gen 2. But I'm not talking Pokewalker. <coughs> yeah, remake of Gen 2 came out in Gen 4. Was it Gen 4? I thought yeah. it was Gen 3. Which no, is no, no, what no. they're yeah, remaking. Right. It was Gen 4, okay. Anyway. And maybe we'll also get Pokemon Walking by us again. Look, <laughs> this is all anyway. we want Nintendo. When it comes to Pokemon... Look, I just want my Pokemon to walk with we, me. Pokemon. We want the ability to play a real Pokemon game. Coliseum's cool. You know, oh, Stadium is cool. But we want a real Pokemon game where we can explore an open world and be able to play it no. at home on our TV. Strongly or disagree. Why? That's what everyone wants. <laughs> everyone wants. No. Stay tuned for my video on why Pokemon makes uh, uh, would be an awful open world game. No, no, no. I'm not saying open world game. Mm. I'm saying make it make your current style Pokemon game as is. Where 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 you're at? I'm, I'm not saying that whole MMORPG thing that a lot of fans are screaming for. I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm saying, take your sun, take your moon, the exact same game, put it on the Switch. They get to where I'm not just having to play handheld, but I can literally play it on my TV. No, no. I, I get what you're saying, and that would be cool, but no, A lot of fans want that. I don't think they'll do it. I don't think there's any point to doing it. There's perfect point to do it. I, I think <laughs> when they're going there's... to make a new Pokemon game on the Switch anyway next year or two years down the line, eh. no reason to right now. <clears throat> okay. Right now, I kind of agree with Blake. I wouldn't mind seeing stars, but still, it's there's it's so many thing. there are so many Nintendo to- topics to cover. Uh, where you have like almost like a minute and a half left. Um, All right. So real quick. Just to sum this up, because there's a lot happening. Yeah. What is we talked about a lot of theories and what we'd like to see, but what is actually stuff we're gonna see? Metroid. Mm. Hopefully. Mario Odyssey. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, 
Metroid. I mean, a lot of that is just us I, talking. I mean, I think right I think is... Metroid has been one of those back pocket games that they that's a lot closer to release than we think it is. Well, Metroid M just did not, or other M didn't do well, so they want to do. Uh, yeah. They wanted to do something better, so they got back right. to Prime, and that's going to be good. Right. Um. So, um, the the other thing. So we said a Pokemon game. We think Pokemon's going to come to, or it's going to be announced. For this year, whether it's on the Switch or the 3DS, we think it's going to mm. happen. Uh, I think Virtual Console and online functionality is going to be announced. I think they they're to. going to be released day of. That's mm. my rumor. I think Virtual Console and GameCube get games are going to be released the day of the presentation. Hey, after this presentation, because Nintendo always does that every year, yep. at least once with something. So, um, any final thoughts? Whole podcast? Anything? My name was Blake. My name was Nate. Cool. And I'm Jaden. You guys, thank you so much for tuning into our first. Uh, info arcade podcast we really appreciate you guys listening in and we're going to have some more topics for you coming up here in a month but make sure you stay tuned because we are going to be having live e3 coverage to tell you about some of our favorite exciting things that we discover and are uh, are shown the same along with you but this has been the info arcade podcast again i'm Jaden. what uh. and that's it you guys have a good one Thank you.